running a restaurant in Spain should be a dream. But for 26-year-old Lawrence Davey, it's a nightmare. This is fucking critical. That's not good, that's raw. Now, I'm not going to taste that yet, but it looks burnt. It's the worst meal we've ever had. He's in the shit. Five plates, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. The first thing I've spotted is dog shit. And if I can't put him back on his feet, he'll be on the next plane home. When's one of you going to step forward with a pair of bollocks? When are you guys going to stop fucking around with excuses? Because that was fucking shocking. <laughs> Costa del Sol, Spain. For the first time, I'm abroad on a special mission to rescue a failing British-run restaurant. During the summer months, thousands of Brits will invade the Mediterranean coastline and spend their hard-earned cash. And to cater for the masses, more and more British restaurants are opening on the Costa. It's champion chips, sausage and chips, fish and chips, barbecue chicken. Lovely. Get it right here, and you could be sitting on a gold mine. How many portions of chips oh. would you serve? Well, per week, roughly. We probably do in excess of 100 portions a day, so seven, 800 a week. How are the chips? Very good. Yeah? What would you do if I banned chips from here? I would not be here, but do you not come? No, probably not, no. This is English, totally. Yes. And it's good English. Is there anything on the Costa that doesn't come with chips? One more steak garnish, please, and a lamb shank. I'll get that. One restaurant owner who thought he'd spotted a gap in the market is 26-year-old Brit Lawrence Davey. 18 months ago, he borrowed £40,000 from his dad and opened La Para at Burayana, 500 metres off the beach in the coastal resort of Neha. This restaurant has great potential to be very successful and very popular. Um, it's in a great location, but I've been doing it for a year and a half now and I haven't seen any success whatsoever. Armed with his catering degree and a few years managing nightclubs and restaurants, Lawrence designed a Mediterranean menu with a twist to lure the Brits away from their egg and chips. My particular favourite, king prawns in garlic and ginger and chilli, served with our signature chocolate sauce on the side. Not very popular, um, which kind of proves the adventurous side of my customers. With the prawns in chocolate sauce failing to win round the Brits, he lost 22 grand in his first year. I don't know whether I went about it the wrong way or whether people don't want it or aren't ready for it, I don't know. Since then, he's broadened his menu to a massive 72 dishes, cooking everything from Chinese chicken to Turkish kebabs. I've even served chicken nuggets and chips to an adult, and I absolutely hate it. I really hate it. But with takings down on last year, he'll be lucky to survive the summer, let alone the winter. I'm in Spain to stop La Para from going under. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Very well. How are you? Very well. Lawrence. Excellent. Yes, it is. Good to yeah. see you. And you? When did it start going really quiet? When did it...? Um, we suddenly snapped about September last year. It suddenly just went, you know, the light, as if the light was switched off. Uh -huh. um, and it, was just, it just died. Um, ever since then, we've been losing money. What did you know about restaurants before you opened it? Um, I said, I did my degree. Did my internship in America. No, in terms of that's training, in terms sure, of... Sure, sure. Um, it was a nightclub in Cheltenham and then became restaurant manager of a big restaurant in London. Uh -huh. And that's when I like, really said, oh, you know, I'm doing it. I'm doing really yeah. well. I'm succeeding in everything, you know, what I'm doing. Why do can't I do it for myself? They need it. They need me in Nurka. Uh -huh. They really need me to do great stuff. Yeah. And now you're 26? Yep. And in the fucking shit? Yep. How bad in the shit? I'm 102,000 euros in debt. 102,000 um, euros? Yeah. So, so 70, 70 grand, grand yeah. So the noose is really on your neck? I've either got to make it here or go back to London and pay back my father. Fuck. Signature dishes are, what would you say? Signature dishes, um, we do uh, a, a great prawns dish with uh -huh. a chocolate sauce, which I've done from day one. Prawns with chocolate sauce? Prawns with chocolate sauce, yeah. So start and dessert at the same time. Well, fuck me, that sounds different. Right, let's see what a former nightclub manager has to offer the Brits abroad. Thanks. Huge menu, extraordinary menu, um, and then different themes. Flamenco, burger night, kebab menu, Chinese chicken or pork, confused. So what the fuck's going on? If I'd wanted a Chinese, I would have gone to one. But I'm in Spain. Let's hope Lawrence's signature dish of prawns in chocolate sauce gives me the flavour of the med. Cool, dear. I mean, 
It's worse than a chocolate sauce. It's a um, hot, over spicy, chilli chocolate sauce. But well, that's just stupid arrogance, really. Trying to match something that's never going to go. If that's how Lawrence serves up fresh local prawns, then I wonder what he's got in store for my fillet steak kebab. Well, he's gone for the kebab, which is our wow factor dish, when you know, it comes out on the hook. So I think he gets to see that bit of what we do. Yeah. Fuck me. Is that how they're always served? Oh, Jesus. Fuck me. It's the kind of thing you imagine Jordan eating with her fucking hands behind her back. Is someone taking the piss? How can you expect something like that? And that to be cooked at the same time? A fillet steak kebab. It may not sound that exciting, but it should taste delicious. And that, in terms of presentation, looks like a pile of shit. If I thought my kebab was overcooked, that's nothing compared to what's happening to my creme catalana. What's all that smoke coming out of the kitchen? Is that okay From there? The dessert, the dessert, From yes. my dessert. It's just when they, they burn the top. Burn the top? Well, not burn the top. <laughs> no, it looks like they burn the kitchen down. <laughs> Fuck me. Well, it's certainly burnt. It looks like a fucking ice hockey puck. Look at it. Comes with an appointment at the dentist tomorrow morning at 9.30. Fuck me. It's liquid and it's, it's ruined. So when you're sat with all these fresh ingredients on your doorstep and the climate they've got, the simpler it is, the better it's going to be. Unfortunately, they've got more complicated and tried to be clever and completely lost the fucking plot. The first rule for running a restaurant in Spain is don't ruin good produce with fancy gimmicks. Good food will always sell itself. Lawrence's novelty dishes may have been designed to turn heads, but all it's done for me is turn my stomach. Prawns. The flavour of the prawns was extraordinary. Fresh, vibrant. Why do you want to fuck around and put chocolate sauce on there? Because um, I don't want to be boring. I want to be exciting. I thought it was fucking hideous. It didn't work. But then I came to this fucking schlong, that kebab. Have you actually ever sat at the table and watched six customers with this fucking donkey's dick swinging in front of their face? It's hilarious. Well, that is, that, that is it. You know, it's a talking point. It's, it's, a, it's a wow factor. That's a wow factor. factor. Yeah. It's a fillet steak. Yeah. It was tough as old boots. Sure. I don't know. Well, but, you know let, let, before you start fucking mouthing up, let me just no, show no, you. A cube that food. big yeah. and a cube that big are not going to cook the same time. Oh, fuck me, here we go. Can I just finish the sentence first, Sinbad, and then you can fucking come back on me in a minute? That out there was embarrassing. So it's painful. If it's painful for me, and you're 102,000 fucking euros in the shit, fuck knows how you sleep at night. I don't. I'm, you know, I feel so shit about the whole thing. But deep down, I really want it to work. I want my dream to come true. You're in Spain. You don't have to be that fucking quirky to be good. I'll see you in the morning. I've certainly got my work cut out. I get the feeling nightclub boy isn't going to give up his novelty dishes without a fight. Prawns and chocolate sauce. Fuck me. For the first time, I'm in Spain on a mission to turn around a failing British-run restaurant. Former nightclub and restaurant manager, Lawrence Davy, came to Neha to conquer the Costa. He thought his novelty dishes of swinging kebabs and prawns and chocolate sauce would win over the egg and chips loving Brits. But the Brits aren't biting. And after sampling his food, I can see why. Lawrence thought he was going to come over to Spain and take it by storm. He opened up at 24 years of age, using his dad's fucking money. He thought his balls were bigger than the mountains, and he thought he was going to bring a Mediterranean twist with a difference. He's got all the gimmicks, and he thinks by being simple, it's too plain for Spain. But you'd never think he's 102,000 euros in fucking debt. It's mid-August, and Neha is flooded with British tourists. Restaurants on the Costa will make a quarter of their annual profit in August alone. Even La Parra will be busy, and boy, do they need to be. OK, two chicken satay, three pinchitas, we're on us, one prawn cocktail. Three Tonight is my five chance five. to see how La Parra copes with a full service. With Lawrence cooking the a la carte dishes alone in the kitchen, his sous chef Norm is grilling the kebabs and steaks on the terrace barbecue. 
So this is your little dungeon then? This it is your. Sure uh... is. This is where they lock me in for the evening. Yeah. Lawrence might not have much experience as a chef, but he has been a restaurant manager. Maybe his skill lies in employing the best staff to do the best jobs. This goes up and down, so I can higher or lower it according to cooking temperatures. Okay, so it's a very modern, updated barbecue. Yes, it's more like a torture rack for food. A torture rack for food? He's not joking. Now, in my book, I think that's well done now. Suffering on top of the grill are ten chicken kebabs that have yet to be ordered. Why do you, why'd you cook it so early on? Well, that... I've only just done them. Are they cooked? Yeah, they're, but... they're, they're coming off now. They're so they're not really now. barbecued, are they? They're almost like poached. Well, they're, they're poached. And... On a barbecue. Well, I seal them off, poach them, and then okay. finish them on the barbecue again. Okay. Kebabs grilled, poached, and left sitting in the heat, they're hardly fresh off the barbecue. But according to Norm, there's plenty of life left in them yet. I usually use them tomorrow for one day. So I will use them tomorrow. The, the one, these ones that I've cooked. Are you out your fucking mind? I know I was letting myself go there, but I've told you the truth. I respect your honesty. But do me a favour. Yeah. Don't even serve those to the stray cats after service tonight, okay. let alone the fucking customers. Okay. Thank you. Fucking hell. Rule number two for running a restaurant in Spain. Tourists might have holiday insurance, but that doesn't mean you can give them Spanish tummy. When cooking on a barbecue, don't take risks. Does he honestly serve the fucking barbecued kebabs the following night? Yes. It's your business, like. I know. And barbecues at the best of times are not the things to be fuck played with in a way that it's a toy. And why don't you stop him serving? I don't know. Norm's Norm. He's, he's in a world of his own. And as night falls, the world of La Parra becomes even darker. Norm looks like he's preparing for a wake. And after seeing his kebabs, I wouldn't be surprised. It's like we're at fucking midnight mass here. You know I that? Know, I know, huh? I know. What's that? It's the dynamo torch, isn't it? Right, see what's going on here, eh? Cooking by clockwork torch, it doesn't get any more Mickey Mouse than this. You need more light out here. I do need more light. What's the cost of a light bulb? Well done, Philip. Sorry? Well done, Philip. Well done, Philip. Yep. We haven't got that, sweetheart, no. I ordered a Philip steak about an hour ago and it hasn't turned up yet. I'm just, I'm just bloody starving, hungry. The food may not be Spanish, but there's certainly something manana about manager Alex's service. I've been sat there over an hour for the main course. He's cooking it and the plates yeah. are in there. Yeah. This fragmented fucking service is horrendous, you know that? Mm. Is it normal for customers to wait this long? Right, so, yeah. I can't go any quicker than I'm going. I'm going as quick as I possibly can. It's not as if I'm not trying. He can try as hard as he likes but no chef can cook 72 different dishes on his own. To keep up with his orders, Lawrence has thrown everything onto his plancher grill. It doesn't get any lazier than that. He's depending on that plancher grill to cook everything, from fucking dorad to kebabs to Chateaubriand, and then this fucking lazy med veg. That is the most disgusting way I've ever seen fucking good ingredients bastardized. He might as well open a fucking greasy spoon and serve egg and chips, because that's fucking disgusting. The huge menu the lazy cooking and the customers waiting hours for food. Lawrence has lost the plot. I don't think I've actually quite ever been faced with something that already, so early on, looks like such an uphill struggle. It's not a shame. It's bullshit. Especially when you're charging money for it. That's not cooking. It's day three, and the hard work starts here. It stinks. If I'm to stand any chance of getting the para out of the shit, this place needs a fresh start. Forks on the floor, glass everywhere, cigarettes, chips, dog shit, fuck me. I've seen some unsavoury things in my time. Alex, two seconds. But dog shit in the dining area is unforgivable. First thing I've spotted is dog shit. That's not good enough. 
Are you happy with that? No, I'm not happy. No. That's disgusting. Yeah, that's the third time I've seen it. Rule number three. Running a restaurant in Spain isn't a holiday. There's a laid-back attitude, the fact that we're in Spain, so we can afford to be semi-casual because we're dealing with tourists. No, are we fucked? We're running a restaurant. And the discipline here can be the same in Paris, can be the same in London, can be anywhere. And thinking that it's good to work in a dirty kitchen or a dirty restaurant with dog shit in, forget it. Great. Manager Alex might be Lawrence's best mate from college, but he's clearly left his standards back in Britain. If dog shit goes unnoticed, then it's no surprise the kitchen is dripping in grease. Your fryers are used a lot, yeah? Yeah. You put fresh oil in there all the time? Well, we change them, yeah. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, how often? Uh, once a week. The oil would last a lot longer if you got rid of all this stuff here, look. Right. There you go. That's what you're cooking out of, yeah? Right. Every time putting fresh oil in there is making fuck all difference. That's sludge. With the restaurant having a much needed deep clean, there's something else I want to clear up. Last February, Lawrence put on a Valentine's dinner for the local Donkey Sanctuary charity. 100 British expats paid £30 a head for a fundraising meal. Rumour has it, Lawrence made a complete arse of it. How bad did it go? I mean, was it. Um... It was a complete fuck up. It was an absolute disaster. In what way? Um, the food was overcooked, dry, tasteless. What was the menu? Um, we did uh, the chicken liver parfait, uh -huh. which wasn't made until the morning, so I had no time to set. A chicken dish wrapped in serrano ham, uh -huh. baked in the oven. And the chicken was so dry, it was like cardboard. Did you give it to them on the house? No. You charged them? Yep. Fucking hell, no wonder they haven't been back. Rule number four. When you're running a restaurant in Spain, don't piss off the locals. When the tourists have gone home, the local expats account for 80% of your take-ins in the winter months. Without them, a British restaurant in Spain can't survive. Hola. A las burros, por favor. Gracias. I'm heading into hostile territory to make peace with the natives. I'm off to the local donkey sanctuary, and hopefully, after meeting them, I don't want to see if there's any chance they actually come back and give the restaurant one more fucking chance. Gracias. All I know about donkeys is they're stubborn. This isn't going to be easy. Um, I'm fascinated to get to the bottom of what actually happened on that fundraising dinner in terms of big event. I mean, not too funny. It was a sort of meal that you're all waiting the next day to have a very nasty trip into the toilet. What was the menu? The menu was pate initially, yep. um, which was frozen. You needed a blowtorch. Frozen. Frost it on your plate. On the plate, frozen. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. frozen on the plate. Yeah. Yeah. Main course was? Chicken mm. stuffed with banana, supposed to be served with banana. asparagus. Mm. Yes. Banana and asparagus. Um, it was supposed to be his signature dish. Not another one with a fucking twist on there. <laughs> <laughs> this became cancerous, didn't it? Because it spread like wildfire across the town. Oh, yeah. Well, it's and a small actually, town. Actually, it's quite the... arrogant about the whole thing. Yeah. If he thinks he can survive in a small town like this with that attitude, he's got another thing coming. Have you been back since? <laughs> <laughs> no. Is it any small fraction of possibility, if you could just think about it, if I could convince you just to put one foot in the door, It'd be a big fucking help, I'm Do you serious. promise us we don't have to eat chocolate-covered prawns? <laughs> Charging a local charity for a bad meal smacks of unbelievable arrogance. Lawrence might have come to Spain to offer the Brits something different, but so far, all he's given them is pretentious novelty food. I'm going to give him a taste of his own medicine. Have a taste of that. Smell first, maybe, a little taste. First up, a chocolate and prawn smoothie based on Lawrence's signature dish. What's that taste of, Lawrence? Chocolate. Yeah, you smell chocolate bigger me, and then it tastes like um, cookies. Cookies. Mm. Taste that one again. No, thanks. I think it's fucking horrible. OK. Um. Next, a chicken and banana smoothie based on the dish he served at the Donkey Sanctuary dinner. There's a texture in there which is quite stringy. Stringy. It's a so stringy texture. It's a banana and string. Oh, man. Banana and something horrible in it again. Mine falls off. The first one is fucking prawns and chocolate. Could you taste a the prawn there? Um, well, I knew there was something in there that was not very nice. You didn't get it? No. What I'm trying to say, if you've got the best of prawns, 
Let them fucking taste of prawn. Don't let them taste of prawn and chocolate. This is the most painful smoothie because it's the chicken and banana. And it's the fucking the dish that managed to piss off the locals at the Donkey Sanctuary fucking charitable event. What the fuck were you thinking about putting banana and chicken together? Tell me so I can help you. OK. Um, it was just you know, using like a South American kind of influences in, in, in roasting chicken. You didn't fucking tell me the truth about the banana. No. And I'm a chef. And I've done my fucking homework before I got here. And let food taste of what it should. It's not just mixing prawns with chocolate and chicken with banana that's the problem. It's the other 70 dishes on Lawrence's huge menu. Sit down. I want to replace it with a dozen dishes that you can cook easily to stop the tourists waiting hours for their dinner. Have you, have you come to terms with you know, trying to restrict the menu? Every time I try to think about it, I think of the people that have asked for this, those particular items and why I shouldn't take them off. I do get some return customers, so I must be doing something right. But where are these fuckers then? Because I've been here for three nights on the trot and I don't see the fucking return business. You give me the impression in such a short period of time I've known you that I've got a young man that's playing with his dad's money trying to fucking run a restaurant. That's the impression I get. Well, I, I think that's wrong, because I believe in what I'm doing is right. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing it. I couldn't do this fucking menu on my own, with 72 dishes on there. I couldn't do it. Because you're not a fucking proper chef. So if you're not a proper chef, then don't try and cook out your box. And unless that's going to fucking sink in and stay in your mind, I've got no chance. Lawrence is refusing to reduce his huge menu, but it's the only way he'll ever cope with a busy restaurant. It's time to prove my point. For tonight's service, I've devised a three-course Mediterranean menu that will fly out the kitchen and get customers served quickly. A gazpacho soup, barbecued chicken with a warm potato salad, and a roasted caramelised peach. What's the twist? There isn't a twist. It's all fucking local. That's yeah. it? There's no twist there? Yep. Tonight, customers will order from Lawrence's a la carte menu, but when he falls behind, he'll switch to mine, and that will show him how quick he can serve customers. I just want him to have that emergency menu yeah, at the forefront of his mind, set his ego apart, get that back in London, and for him to concentrate on sort of accomplishing a fully booked service with no complaints. Got an order for chocolate prawns? He said, you know, earlier, no one wants to buy chocolate prawns. He thinks it's shit. It's a stupid idea. First order that came in, chocolate prawns and carrot soup. So, um... It's nine o'clock, and the orders from Lawrence's huge menu of 72 dishes are now flooding in. But it's already starting to go wrong. Medium. Yes. Yeah, look. No, no, it's raw. It's not pink. It's okay. raw. It's raw. It's red raw. All I want you to do is just cook a fucking kebab properly. Well, that's still live on it, Yeah, it? please. Right, you in control. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, I'm not going to taste that yet, but it looks burnt. Lawrence needs to push the button now and replace his menu with my menu if he's to avoid a repeat of last night's fiasco. You want to push the button? No. No, no, seriously. No. No, no. Not seriously, yet. Not yeah? Yet. No. You sure? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Hey, this has nothing to do with your bollocks and the size of your cock, is it? No. Lawrence's reluctance to use my emergency menu means it's the customers who suffer. And if I'm dead honest with you, the lamb is... Everyone's saying the lamb's bone dry. It's appalling, really. It really is appalling. Yeah. What happened to that one there? It's not hot enough for them. That's not cooked. That's raw. But the complaint was that it's cold. Yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah it's cold because it's what? Raw. That's why. Yeah. When meals start coming back, Lawrence finally cracks. Right, you're right. Yeah. You are, yes? Yeah, I've called your menu away. You've called it away? Yeah. It's all done. Okay. All you have to do is call it away. Okay. Hey, and Norman's just got to put the fucking chicken on the barbecue, nothing more, yes? Thank you for pushing the fucking button. Pushing out my emergency menu should have been idiot proof, but they've left it too late. And in the hands of Dumb and Dumber, it descends into farce. This is 
which is what I put in 25 minutes ago. Yeah, and I'm still time late because I've had to send food out. I can't stop, start, okay. stop, start. I'm doing my next order, which is two four kebabs and a chicken kebab. No, don't. I just asked you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to brush Norm. it. Norm. Norm. I'm looking for the cloth, Lawrence. Okay. Oh, come on, Norm. If there's a time I need to pull your finger out now, it's right now, you know that. Hey. I know. Yeah? I've got two pork kebabs to make here. But why are we serving pork kebab when we've got the emergency menu on? I don't know. Ask the waiter. Okay. There's little point in asking okay, restaurant you, manager Alex. You guys on top of stuff, how are your tables? Do I need to go to any tables at all? He's so confused as to who's ordered what, he's now serving food to tables with no one on them. They should be here, but they're not here. Right, okay, let's go back to the kitchen. So this place right now is the biggest shithole in Spain. It's fucking embarrassing. Costa del shithole at its best. It's the worst meal we've ever had. Well, it's quarter to 12 now. We, we got here at half past nine. We just finished the main course, so it has been a long wait. With customers worn out from waiting, Meals been sent back, and now refunds been handed out. Surely even Lawrence can see that by sticking to his stupid menu, he's only got himself to blame. I'm speechless, so I, 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 I don't know what to say. Let's get to the crux. Lawrence? Um, I think mean, Norman was put on the far too much pressure tonight. You know, he, your, your menu made him plate up his own plates and do the starters and the cold soups out there on the barbie and he couldn't manage slowed him down too much um, you're telling me that my menu fucked him up on the grill he couldn't he couldn't deal with it couldn't deal with what putting a fucking bowl of soup out that's already made for him well, that was yeah, it was shown was when are you guys going to stop fucking around with excuses when's one of you going to step forward with a pair of bollocks and give me some fucking honesty because I don't know where you were, because that was fucking shocking. Let me tell you something. You made a fucking good decision. You pushed the button. Whether you like it or not, it was too fucking late. An hour and a half late. So whose fucking fault was it now? Chef, I'm fucking out of here. Fuck yourself. <laughs> Well, he wanted me to be honest, I told him what I thought. Yeah, maybe I should have led with, the whole, with his whole menu. But that's hindsight. And in hindsight, I should have never even done this fucking project. It's day five, and there's storm clouds over La Parra. I've never felt as bad about a restaurant as I did last night, and when I walked out, I wasn't sure I'd be coming back. Pissing down. But just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, there was a break-in, and nearly £4,000 were stolen from the premises overnight. Morning. Gordon. Thank you. Yeah, fine. Um, first of all, sorry to hear about the news. Fuck it yeah. out. It's not good. No, it's not good at all. How much was it? Five and a half thousand euros. Five and a half thousand euros? <laughs> Money. Hey. She's not happy either. Well, she's yeah. not much of a fucking guard, dog, is she? <laughs> uh, hey, psst. Um, and where's the, where's the safe? It's not so much a safe, but a cash tin in a filing cabinet. Been jimmied here and down the sides. It's still locked. I haven't moved or touched anything. This is how I found it when I came down. You've then got the, the money box inside here. Unbelievable. They've left the small notes. They just took the big ones. I mean, I'm not being funny, it's the filing cabinet. I know. Why would you leave five and a half grand in there? The most important rule for any restaurant owner anywhere in the world is always put your takings in the bank. Jesus Christ. I've got to think long and hard whether I can actually continue without that money. And now that may be the clincher that, you know, I won't be able to make it. It's not just a failing restaurant I'm dealing with but an owner about to book his flight home. If ever there was a time for Lawrence to realise that I'm here to help, it's now. You know, it's your pride. 
that you've got to stop fucking worrying yeah. about. Because how fucking proud are you going to feel at fucking Malaga Airport with your bags? What are you going to do? What? Wait, no, seriously. Hello, what the fuck are you going to do? Go home. Yeah, go home. With your fucking cock between your legs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what? Ring your mates. Tell them what a big fucking shit you've been in fucking Spain. I don't go through that kind of bullshit to fucking help turn a restaurant around. I can't do it without you. I've only one more chance to get through to Lawrence and get him listening to me. You wouldn't go into a bull ring without taking clear instruction from someone who knows what they're talking about. Lawrence. Hola, Rafael. Hola. Hola. Listen to this man for the next five minutes because um, he's going to show you some very, very crucial moves. You, Miguel Capote. No Capote. I hope to God he ditches the arrogance and listens to Matador Rafael more than he's listened to me. Big fucking test for Lawrence now. He's got to stand on his own two feet and show me, as the Spanish would say, your cojones. Show me you've got a pair of bollocks and fucking use them. Have you got your cojones? Sit. Si. Yeah? No problemo. Where? Where? Currently tucked up inside. Stay out of the way. Watch out. Fucking hell. Where's your cojones? Oh, it's a fucking, it's just a shitstorm. I don't think um, Spanish bulls like me very much. What am I doing? Oh, fucking hell. That's not a good sign. One thing he doesn't need now is stubbornness. Here we go. Get off your ass. Come on, get up. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> Come on, get out of here. Come on. Hey. With Lawrence carefully listening to Raphael's expert advice, he starts to get the hang of it. I won one. Yeah. <laughs> Rule number six. Running a restaurant in Spain is a risky business. It pays to listen to some expert advice. Fucking scary, now. Yeah. How do you feel? Um, I feel like your point's been proven in a very big way. You have a big pair of cojones. Now just fucking use them. Yeah. Well done. Get some water. Yeah. Fucking hell. Now I've got Lawrence listening, I need to get him cooking like a proper chef. Every night, Lawrence cooks everything on this plancha grill to save time. As a result, it all tastes the same. Fishy meat and meaty veg. All you do now is cook an egg on there for me. Whilst Lawrence fries an egg on the plancha grill, I'm cooking mine in a non-stick frying pan. I want to teach him how his lazy way of cooking is tainting everything he serves up. That's just with an egg. Yeah. What I'm trying to get through is all that there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is what? Carbonised food from. Thank you. Ages and ages of beauty. Carbonised fucking shit. And all I want you to do now is start thinking about cooking in pans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to show Lawrence that in the time it takes him to cook a whole sea bream on his grill, he could fill it in, fry it and make a simple Mediterranean sauce. What I'm trying to do, Lawrence, yeah, yeah. is make your life fucking easier. You know that? Yeah. And whilst I'm still waiting for yours, I've just got a, an orange, a lemon, a pink grapefruit, fresh basil. Are you cooked yet? Almost. Out and on. Mm. Now, I'm not trying to be some jumped-up, fucking smarmy-ass little fucker. I'm just trying to explain mm -hmm. you're busting your bollocks the wrong way round. Because I am not going to fucking listen to fucking Tom, Dick and Harry telling me they want to sit and fucking compete with that, mm. or sit and eat that. I know which one you can do ten times quicker and a thousand times better. 
don't be scared to use a pan, OK? Do you understand? He's drilled into me my pride and, you know, my arrogance has really shut through and I've been a bit of an arse about it and a bit stubborn. And, you know, I'm, I'm really now excited that he's here. I really want to learn and, and get this place moving. The penny might have dropped, but now I've only got two days to put things right. Out with the old, yeah, in with the new. Fucking bin them, yeah? We're short of coal tonight. With Lawrence finally letting go of his huge menu, it's time for a new beginning. In its place, I've created a small Mediterranean menu using local produce. Five starters, including figs and serrano ham, and watermelon with feta cheese. And six mains, including a pan-fried sea bream and a barbecued chicken on a warm potato salad. Actually, cooking properly is, that feels absolutely fantastic at last. Limited menu, fresh ingredients, absolutely amazing. The menu will offer Brits something authentic, fresh, and above all, quick to prepare. And in reducing 72 dishes to 15, yeah. service couldn't be any simpler for restaurant manager Alex. Yeah. So, OK, what about this table here? 8.30 booking. I've uh, just taken the order now. OK, good. OK, let's go, yeah? The menu's simpler, a lot easier. We can do volume now. Now we've got a chance to put the fucking thing right. It's my final night, and it's the relaunch of La Parra's new menu. Okay. I've only got one shot at this, and I can't afford any mistakes. Changing you tonight, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're coming off that barbecue, yeah? I want you connected to the owner as a sous chef. Okay. That's my decision, and I'm sticking to it. I'm putting sous chef Norm in the kitchen, prepping cold starters. And pot washer Tom will take his place on the barbecue. It's a gamble, but I'm confident Tom will send the meat out cooked. And all you have to do is take the chicken off the barbecue yep. and put it onto the plate okay. and send it, yeah? Sure. Good. There you go, sir. This evening isn't just about launching a new menu. It's about Lawrence regaining his reputation with the British expat community. Six months ago, he hosted a fundraising dinner for the local donkey sanctuary. Serving frozen starters and chicken stuffed with banana, it was a fiasco. Tonight, I've convinced them to come back. It's very nerve-wracking having them here because I know how much I upset them last time and I know how much distaste they have for the restaurant in general. And it's really nerve-wracking for me to be able to, to know that I've, I've got to cook for them and cook them really, really well. Tonight will be the test, whether or not the food's edible. That would be a good start. With customers getting their food on time, the relaunch is off to a good start. It's quite refreshing to have something different and not the same sort of chicken or fish with fries. A lot better than last year, yeah. Phenomenal. Nothing's come back. Everything's cooked beautifully. Yeah, to be honest, so far, it's been a breath of fresh air. Right, Donkey Sanctuary just sat down, yes? Yep, OK, we're on okay. there, starters now. Treat that uh, table like a time bomb. The starters arrive for the Donkey Sanctuary. But just when I thought it was all going to plan, Alex has forgotten to serve the wine. How can we put the starters down without serving the wine? Um, of all tables. Come on. At 9 o'clock, the restaurant's full. But bizarrely, there's a backlog of people waiting for tables. It's Alex's responsibility to get them seated, but he's flapping around like a headless chicken. What's going on with this fucking table that's waiting the bar for so long? Uh, Danny, table six. Table six, yeah. I double booked it, you see, at the start of the night, and I had to tell them that, you know, we need to have the table back. Who um, did you tell you need the table back? The customer? The customer, yeah. What about the fucking kitchen? They need to know first, because they've got to cook it. Yeah. So they leave your ass, huh? For some bizarre reason, Alex has got tables double booked within an hour. No one can eat anything within an hour. Embarrassing. I mean, fucking embarrassing. Alex has simply got greedy in thinking they can turn tables around in an hour. As a result, people are turning up for the reservations but have nowhere to sit. And in the kitchen, Lawrence is now struggling with a backlog of orders. Table. On top of all that, Alex has now gone into meltdown. Alex, get a grip. Alex, you can do it, Alex. I know. You can fucking do it. We're waiting on you. 
I know you're waiting on me, and I really appreciate this. This is fucking critical. Okay, now. Go. Come on, Alex, please. We waited for 40 minutes for a starter, then sat with dirty plates for 45 minutes. And then we were asked to leave the table because the next lot of um, guests arrived. Five plates, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Five? Five. Although under pressure, Lawrence is at least coping with my reduced menu. Yep, yeah. you got three serrano, three watermelon, yep. Yeah. We'll finish us off in a minute as soon as I get these out. I can only be grateful that Lawrence got the donkey sanctuary main courses out before the shit hit the fan. Very, very nice. I mean, it was a lot nicer than chicken banana, I must admit. The food is actually very good. Um, I think everybody's quite pleased with the food. If he can come up with this sort of deal, yes, we'll be back again. Good, but the service leaves, leaves quite a little bit to be desired, I think. A lot more work on the service. It's the end of the evening, and Lawrence's cooking has been a success. But Alex's double booking madness has let everyone down. We're so close, Alex. So close. You can do better. I know I can do better. You can do better. I know I can do better. Turn around and tell him that. He's paying your salary. Fucking tough nine. A real tough night. 87 covers and it was a struggle. And the service was fucking pretty dismal. However, the Donkey Sanctuary have confirmed they're going to come back. That speaks volumes. That means the local community are now back on their side. And quite frankly, you can't ask for a more crucial time for them to support it because we're just about to come out of the summer season and into the fucking winter. And without their support, they won't get through the winter. In six days, I've finally seen a change at La Parra. But once I've gone, Lawrence has only four weeks until the end of the season to make the money that will help him survive the winter. Remember, do not cut corners and don't make a fucking ass of yourself. Look, a stark reminder to make sure the standards never slip. Don't make a fucking ass of yourself. That's gone. That is fucking gone. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. I only hope La Parra's doors will still be open when I return. In the summer, I spent a week at La Parra de Beriana on the Costa del Sol. It was holiday hell. That's not cool, that's raw. Former nightclub manager Lawrence Davy was up to his eyes in debt. He had swinging kebabs. Someone taking the piss. Prawns in chocolate sauce. I thought it was fucking hideous. And his dishes with a twist had pissed off the Brits. It's appalling, really. Really is appalling. Yeah. Lawrence was so stubborn, he wouldn't give up his huge menu without a fight. No. You sure? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Hey, this has nothing to do with your bollocks and size of your cock, is it? No. <laughs> After knocking some sense into him, I created a set menu of just 15 authentic Mediterranean dishes. And on the launch night, we won back the local expat trade that Lawrence had lost. If he can come up with this sort of deal, yes, we'll be back again. <laughs> Four weeks later, I'm back on the Costa. It's late September, and most of the tourists have packed up and gone home. The beachfront restaurants are deserted, and Nehach feels like a ghost town. I only hope La Parra is faring better. Good to see you. And you? Yeah? How's the month been? Busy, very, very busy. Really? Yeah. Uh, Good. Almost double last year. So that's fucking great news. Yeah, Good to you. see you. You too. Good How have you been? You. Really good. Yeah, it's been great. Yes? Yeah. Busy? It has been busy. And you're working hard? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Less flustered? Yes. Yeah, More organised? We're organised, we're happy, we're communicating. And what's the special kebab tonight? The special <laughs> kebab? Uh, the special kebab is in the bin. Great. Donkey dick kebabs are off the menu. Norm's still in the kitchen preparing cold starters. Good to see you, my man. And out on the terrace is Tom, the former yes. pot washer, now promoted as the barbecue chef. And has Norman sneaked out here again, or is this your domain? This is my domain. This is your domain. Yes. But best of all, Lawrence is no longer cooking on the plancher grill. I haven't used it in about three weeks. You haven't used the plancher grill? It, no. Thank you. 
Fucking hell, I really mean that, yeah? You must miss it, no? No, I did. I did for about a week. I kept on going back to it. Thinking, yeah. shit, where's my steak? Yeah. And it was always in the oven. Where should we sit? Perfect. Considering it's the end of the season, La Parra is reassuringly busy. Everything seems to be running more efficiently. There's an air of calmness around it, and it has a nice buzz, which is lovely. Everything's gleaming. It's spotless. The menu is no longer the size of a telephone directory. It's one page, and there are even some new dishes for me to try. I was a little bit cocky and um, that he'd love my food when he first got here. This time round, um, I know that I, I really, really want to impress him now with these dishes. If I can't impress him now, then you know I've really fucked it up. Here we are. Here is the squid and shoot set. Thank you. For my starter, I've chosen barbecue squid and chorizo sausage on a bed of rocket. It's nicely cooked. It's not too chewy. And the cerezo sausage just gives it that little spice that squid needs. And that's what you come to Spain for, dishes like this. For my main course, I've chosen sea bass on a bed of cream leeks, one of the new dishes on Lawrence's autumn menu. There's just no comparison to what I was fed a month ago, where it's just really nice, clean, simple, honest food, and that's what this place needed, without any stupid fucking twists. Four weeks ago, Lawrence was £75,000 in debt, equivalent to €102,000, and La Parra was on the verge of closing down. <clears throat> what really shocked me about tonight's dinner is I can't believe it was the same guy that was cooking my dinner a month ago. That was delicious. It's an absolute pleasure to cook in here now. And I, you know, I'm not angry, I'm not upset, I'm just you know, cooking the food that I love cooking. And, and seeing empty plates come back clean and, and happy customers leaving the restaurant. You took 3,000 euros this time a year ago, now yeah. you're on 9,000 euros. Sure. What have you knocked off on the debt? Um, I've knocked off 13,000 euros since you were here. Like Cash? Cash. Already? Yeah. What do you need to do a night to stay open during the winter? How many covers? During the winter, 20. 20. So already tonight, with 33 or 34 in for dinner, yeah, we're, we're not no. home and dry, but no. we're fucking making sure. great headway. Don't you fucking dare stop, yeah? Right. And every time you think of stopping, turn on the plancher grill, yeah? <laughs> Deep fry your fucking vegetables and fucking hit them on there. Never again. Good night. Yeah. Tom. That was value for money. Delicious, straightforward, local produce, cooked properly, and he's not trying to be too fucking clever. And if he can continue doing that, He's got a strong chance of surviving the winter and opening up next fucking season, ready to attack it with some money in the bank. Thank God for that. The fucking penny has finally dropped. Time's running out for the Fennec Arms, a country pub that thinks it's Claridge's. Is this pub food? No. Because I can't quite believe I'm fucking standing in a traditional English pub. This week, I'm trying to help the most stubborn fruitcake I've ever met. I love baits. Now, where did that one come from? Seven days to teach this old dog some new tricks. Just remember, we are the bosses. It will take a miracle. Fucking come and tell me. Yeah? Because I'll smash them over your fucking head. The Loon Valley, a wealthy farming area in the heart of the Lancashire countryside. Home of the hot pot and the custard tart and a great location for a roadside pub. So I'm looking for the Fennec Arms. A good old traditional English pub. Every day, thousands of punters speed past the pub. It's slap bang on the busy A683 between Lancaster and Kirby Lonsdale. Pubs are now the nation's favourite place to eat out, 
and Brian Ray has spent the last 30 years cooking pub food. I don't claim to be God, I don't claim to be Jesus, but in my business and in my kitchen, my word is law. There's a mint to be made if you get pub food right. But since Brian and his partner Elaine Howden took over the Finnegan Arms three years ago, they've been hemorrhaging money at a rate of 1,500 quid a week. What's going on up there? One big overgrown bush. Fuck me. Over here is the menu. OK. Oh, shit. This is... Elaine. Elaine, nice to see you. And Hello, I'm Brian. Brian, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Good. Delighted to meet you. Likewise, good to see you. Very delighted. God, it's tight in here, isn't it? Yep. So where's the um, where's the restaurant? Dining areas this way. Follow us down there. This is supposed to be a traditional English pub, but it's full of tacky clutter. And when it comes to table settings, Brian's got serious delusions of grandeur. God, um... extraordinary. <laughs> Not what I imagined as a pub. Um, we used to have this just as a small dining room with yeah. four tables in it. God, looks um, like you've got the Queen coming for fucking dinner, no? Unfortunately, no one's coming for dinner. But it's not for want of trying. Brian and Elaine are throwing everything at this failing business. We spend most of our life down here. Anything between 100 and... 120 hours a week down here. 120 hours a week? Mm. 60 hours each? Yeah. No. no. 120 each. So what days off do you take? We don't. We don't. So you don't take days off? We had, we had Christmas Day off this year. That was your last day off? Yep, and the day before that was the previous Christmas, and the day before that would have been about 18 years ago. Jesus. I had six days off for a quadruple, quadruple heart, heart bypass, but I was back at work on the seventh day. Fucking you, you're back at work seven days later? Yeah. Yep, seven days after the op, True. I was back working in the kitchen cooking. Are you mad? Probably. How old are you? 62. 62. Christ. Brian is killing himself over an empty pub. This place should feel laid back and lively, but it's got all the formality and awkwardness of a wake. It stays. You know, the atmosphere is static and very... And dreary. So I'm in you for this evening. Thank you. Plus the additions of the day. Care for a wine list? Brian calls them additions rather than specials. Doesn't like to call them specials. Fuck me. God, what I see. But it's far from being a pub menu, is it? My God. Red Johnson's corn fed goosenard duck breasts, ribble farmhouse savoy cabbage, rossy potato. Wellington crispy apple chutney and Calvados jus. Fuck me. Brian's trying way too hard, and his list of pompous sauces is ridiculous. I mean, there's pure Merlot, red wine sauce, jus, Calvados jus, Lancashire jus, caramelised onions, tartare. Extraordinary. You walk into a pub and you expect a steak and pudding, a shepherd's pie. I've ordered the simplest thing on the menu, a prawn salad. But Brian doesn't do simple. We'd like to point out, first and foremost, we're a traditional old English pub. Bloody hell. That's steeped in tradition there, isn't it? Let's see if Brian can get traditional with my main course. But I'm doubtful. It's cocker and rack of lamb, Balsamic cherry tomatoes and one of those pretentious sauces. How the fuck do you get in? <laughs> How do you get the lamb out? Not only is this not pub food, but it's plain awful. Mm. Honestly, it's like chewing a fucking golf ball. Brian's got a lot to answer for. This is a pub, isn't it? Yes. And that's what I had to keep on telling myself. A traditional old English pub. So how many pubs have you been in that have served a over-reduced, syrupy, sickly balsam with vinegar in a Z shape over a square plate? Probably none. A pub or pub grub is the next step up from, from home. No, it's that basic, rustic, honest, good, British, solid food. Um, there's nothing traditional about what you're doing here. 
This is currently running as a restaurant that is confused, over the top, I mean, absurd, beyond belief. You're not running a pub. It feels like you're running a restaurant badly. Modern pub food is all about simple home cooking done well. But I don't think it's going to be easy persuading Brian and Elaine that they need to get back to basics. How are you feeling? Totally crap. <laughs> I, it was pretty devastating last night. Um, some of the things, yes, we could fully accept and take. Uh -huh. um, but to be quite honest, the way we felt, if you have to be like that to get to the top, I'm glad I'm at the bottom. I've got to be brutally honest. Clearly, you don't like that level of honesty. I'm not here for a confrontation. And, you know, if you're that devastated on the back of what you've been through in this industry for 30 years, I'm surprised you're so weak. After 30 years hard graft, Brian and Elaine should be reaping the benefits. But in fact, they're facing bankruptcy and could be homeless in three months. They've got to face facts. How much um, are you in debt? When we actually sat down and wrote it down, tossed it all up, uh, put everything into it, well, you sort of leave things out so that you don't see it. Uh, we're about a quarter of a million. In debt? If we had to close tonight? Uh-huh. The situation at the Fenwick Arms is desperate. I need to find out how Brian runs his kitchen. Since his heart op, his memory lets him down, so he sets a timer for every dish he's cooking. And that helps you not to forget when it's ready. Well, it's not just that. It's giving you an awareness all the time that time's passed. So how many times have you got going on? Just one at the moment. Well, three times. Brian's short-term memory is as awful as the rich sticky sauce he's coating every dish. Um, this one? And that, I believe, is a previous scrumpy reduction. Um, we actually didn't have a lot of cider. So it's a scrumpy reduction without the scrumpy? Apple ties reduction. With apple ties in there? Apple ties. Fuck me, I feel sick. I'm starting to realise nothing about this kitchen makes sense. Have you got any so, mash ready for us, Nath? Have we got a bowl for that? While Brian runs round the tiny cramped space, he's paying top whack to his most experienced chef, Nathan, who seems to just put pass in everything. Is this normal or someone taking the piss out of me? This is normal. It's normal. I've never seen such a chaotic and inefficient kitchen. And on top of that, there's Brian's overcomplicated and frankly ridiculous food. Stone cold pate, stone cold lettuce, piping hot pigeon, red wine sauce. Parsley. Hey. You've got a fucking brain, haven't you? I hope yeah, so. Yeah, I'd like to think so. Is this pub food? No. Because I can't quite believe I'm fucking standing in a traditional English pub. Brian's already had five heart attacks, and he's running himself into the ground, cooking the wrong food in the wrong way. Your kitchen is a disaster zone. It is fucking impossible to get food out of there. Well, I tell you what, big boy. You may be 62, but fuck me, you don't have to work that hard, you know that? Yeah, it'd be nice if it isn't. I, I, I swear to God, because that must be a fucking nightmare in there. The Fenwick Arms in Lancashire has ideas above its station. It's a country pub with aspirations to be a fancy restaurant. The dining room is set for the Queen and the food is pretentious. Brian Ray and Elaine Howden are over a quarter of a million pounds in debt, but they're still spending. You've got a setup of a restaurant, big coffee machine, espresso. Oh, expensive bit of quit, this, no? Uh, I picked it up for 400 pounds. 400 quid? Yeah. You bought it? Yeah. From where? eBay. eBay? Yeah. Brian stuffed his kitchen with so much second-hand equipment, you can't swing a cat. Let me just squeeze past here. Thank fuck you're small, you know that. Huh? It's not set of time. I know what you, that's what you do. You look for chefs on eBay, look at their size, their measurements, their weight, then employ them, yes? Brian's DIY kitchen is a cramped, botched together disaster zone, held together with bits of string. 
and his hoarding problem goes much deeper than I first thought. I, I love plates. Whereas other people will go and have a holiday or go out for a meal, I'll save my pennies and buy a plate. Jesus, fuck me. Look at all those plates there, wrapped in clim film. Why are they wrapped in clim film? Stay clean. To stay clean? Yeah. <laughs> right. What are these plates used for? Just some I bought to play with. Some you bought to play with? Yeah, we haven't played with them yet. Just got the chance of getting them, so I got them. What do you think of putting them there? Salad soup? I don't soup? know. We'll come up with some dish and use them for that. No, 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 come on. You don't serve food in them, do you? Yes, we did. Oh, no, come on. I wouldn't even put a fucking dog's dinner in there. You don't serve food in them. Uh, we have done in the past. No. You... Look at the size of it. They're big. I mean, you, you, can, you can go tiling with that thing. You know that? We can retile this whole establishment with these plates. Just look what we can start doing in terms of, look. Uh, already starting to look unique, isn't it? Yep. Uh, and so you said, what, what, what Chinese dish on this one? It wasn't, it was a Japanese dish. Christ almighty. Oh. The tile glue didn't stick. Shit. It's all right, don't Shit. worry, it was chipped anyway. Sorry. Damn, 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 damn. Every corner I turn, I discover another of Brian's stashes squirreled away. Now, where did that one come from? I bought that from Villaroy Bock. Fucking hell. And what's that? You don't serve food on that, come on. Yes, we do. It's like a fucking swimming pool for Barbie. Now we've got one with three compartments down the side. We serve the steak on that. You serve the steak on yep. that? Yep. <sighs> a lifetime of hoarding calls for shock treatment. For the first time ever, we're going to get rid of that fucking junk. Before I can even think about changing the food, I've got to make some space. Condemned, broken, chipped, skipped. Yeah? Yeah. This, where did you get this thing from? eBay. eBay. Tucked away in the corner, Brian's got a huge, disgusting stock pot. It's the base for all his revolting sauces. That's going to go in the skip. We don't need to fucking have the Shiraz, the Merlot. We don't need it. That, for me, is a hazard. Do we need that hot plate? Um, well, it's usually a way of keeping the food hot. Brian's been collecting kitchen equipment for 30 years. He's never thrown anything away. And even with me here to help, he's finding it difficult. Bit of a shock to the system. It's a hell of a shock to the system. Some of these items here you're going to keep, some of them here you're going to sell, and some of them you're going to chuck. Pin it, tag on there. Left to his own devices, I know Brian would put all this junk back, so I'm forcing him to decide how much of it is actually essential to running the kitchen. I don't want to get rid of that yet. There. I just want to keep that top. It's a tabletop. I don't want to get rid of that. Oh, dear. He's hopeless. Keep them, because I'll have to find somewhere for them. How many microwaves do we need? Let's keep one or two. One. Three? Can I, what are you doing with three microwaves? One. One. And one spare. I've been trying to get rid of some of this rubbish for two or three years, but Brian will not part with anything. I'm leaving Elaine in charge of rebuilding the kitchen while I make sure that Brian's junk has gone for good. OK, why do you think I brought you here? I have no idea. You've got no idea. Well, see that skip behind there? That's full of your junk. And I'm really worried the fact that you're going to put half that junk back in your kitchen. So I've got to get rid of it once and for all. Come on, get that stock pot away. We're getting rid of the shit. Look at it. Stop hoarding crap. I think you've well and truly made the point. The harsh truth is that 20 rural pubs close every month, and if Brian and Elaine don't want to add to that number, they need to start making some drastic changes. Got a huge amount of respect for fucking Brian. The guy's 62 years of age. He's been cooking for 30 years. He hasn't got a fucking pot to piss in. He's working in excess of 120 hours a fucking week in the kitchen. 
I'm sorry, but for any man at 62, that can kill you. Clearing out the junk was just the beginning. Before I can start changing that god-awful food, I need to get this kitchen working properly. Look at the space you've got here like that. Hey, we're going to throw a fucking dance in here in a minute. I've got to do something drastic. I need to clear out one final thing from the kitchen. Brian. Brian, big night for you tonight. Don't be scared of a change. You're not cooking in the kitchen tonight. You are out of the kitchen for good. And you are more than capable of running your pub, but not from the kitchen. As a proper publican, as a proper host. I will do my best. Please go and get changed. I will. I think this kitchen has got a better chance without Brian. He's got a young but enthusiastic team of three chefs, Nathan, Karen and Chris. I know how difficult Brian is to work with. That is so fucking obvious, yeah? He's gone now, yeah? He's not running the kitchen, he's running his business. Show him that you can do it. <laughs> it's essential that the Fennec Arms has a friendly couple out front. But I'm not convinced Brian will be up to the job after 30 years behind the stove. Good evening. Did anybody tell you we've run out of sea bass and we've only got one Tian left? Right. Anybody any ideas on what you're looking for? Before we run out of what's left? Oh dear. Not exactly a polished performance. Talk to them, Brian. They won't bite. <laughs> but it's looking much more professional in the kitchen where Karen has taken charge. Don't worry about drizzling the plate, just sauce the fucking thing, please. There you go. Good. Even with Brian's complicated menu, the food is flying out of the kitchen, just like it should do in a pub. They're doing a great job in there. Now the problem's in the dining room, and there's no vibrant set. The atmosphere is stuffy and formal. Why on earth is Elaine pouring the wine? This is supposed to be a pub. While Brian and Elaine fuss over their customers, there are empty tables in the dining room and the bar is filling up with people waiting to eat. They're never gonna make a profit running it like this. They need to fill the tables twice a night. What's happening in the bar, everyone's sitting in there taking orders. Get them straight to the fucking table. Get them in the restaurant, clear the bar. Can I pass you some menus? Are these ladies part of your party? Brian has got to loosen up, or they'll never speed up the service. First of all, you guys, yeah, fucking well done. I mean, really well done. My problem was in the dining room. Your service doesn't need to be that formal. If you relax, the service will relax. And that's not nitpicking. We're a pub. Yeah. What's wrong with them carrying their own drinks through to the table? Nothing you know whatsoever. yourself when the atmosphere's not right. You know it's not running smoothly. Of course you do. But we need to work on that level of just a pub. I've only got three days to go. And I've still got to solve the biggest problem at the Fennec Arms, Brian's food. What is traditionally English pub food? What is it? Well, I suppose English pub food is basically scampi, gammon, sausage, that. But that isn't what I want to be. That's I... nothing of a sort. Fuck me, what pubs have you been in? Um, not quite so many since I ended up in one myself. It's rustic, simple English cooking. Whether it's a bowl of split pea soup, whether it's a Lancashire hot pot, whether it's steak and chips, it is simple food. And that's where I've lost my way, then. It's time I pushed Brian in the right direction. See this on here? Twaddle, yeah? Absolute horrendous waffle. I don't want to see the Madeira sauce, the citrus mayonnaise. 
I don't want to see a Calvados jus. No more sauces. The pub will be serving great British pub food. I've got to start replacing some of Brian's dishes with good home cooking. Yeah? Yeah. What's wrong with having Lancashire hot pot on the menu? Nothing. No. Nothing at all. Where are we? Lancashire. Lancashire. Yeah. And so why is that not on the menu? I've asked Brian and Elaine to rewrite the menu minus the waffle. Pan fried duck livers. Just fried duck livers. Fish cake. Um, just put down fish cake. Potatoes on top. Lots of potatoes, yeah? Spread nice. Good. Give it a little twist at the bottom like that. That mixes the onions and the potatoes. Yeah, up, on top, and in. What have you done for the fish cake? Salmon and haddock fish cake. Oh, salmon and haddock fish cake. Salmon and haddock fish cake? Yeah. And that's it? Yep. Wow. Finally, we're getting somewhere. I feel that we're really starting to fucking understand what a pub means. Progress at last. But I don't think they really understand what a pub is until they've been to one. So I'm giving them the night off. Their first Saturday night out in 18 years. Good. Uh, right, Elaine. Uh, Brian. Take the dogs for a walk. Don't worry about the service. Right. When you come back, OK, get changed, yeah, and come and have dinner. When was the last time you sat in here on a Saturday night and watched your staff at work and enjoyed your dinner? Never. Never. Right. OK. Off you go. Thank you, guys. See you later. Oh, thank, thank, you. You. Yeah. thank you. See you later. Right. Now, one last thing. You're the only pub in Britain that's got a fucking uniform. Get changed into your civvies, see you in five minutes, ready to run the place, yeah? There's a good boy. There's a good boy. Come on, Lane. I'm hoping that if Brian and Elaine experience a real pub atmosphere, they'll realise relaxed is best. So tonight, there'll be no fussy service at the Fenwick Arms. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, welcome to Fenwick Arms. How are you? Very well, well thank you. Good, good, good. Uh, you can't come in. You too busy? Um, no, we're not too busy. Um, you're not here to receive an OBE. You're here to have dinner. You're dressed too formal. We'll go back again. As quick as you can. Right. Lovely. We've never been out ever not dressed like this. Right. Come back with yeah. something casual. <laughs> Welcome to the Fenwick Arms. Come through, please. Thank you. Cheers, Dick. Cheers. Tonight, they'll be sampling the first of my new real pub grub. Not a sticky jus in sight. It's a rather nice colour, isn't it? You want to taste this patty? It's good. With that. Mm. That. That is to die for. The food has been a hit. I hope they've finally got the message that they've got nothing to fear from going back to basics. You've got to show flexibility. And you can do it. And getting you out of this place today was a breath of fresh air. Just to relax the place. And the more you can relax, I swear to God, you're going to see your business grow. Last night was a success. I thought the Fennec Arms was back on track. But this morning, I've discovered Brian has gone behind my back and jeopardised everything we've been trying to achieve. We had a really good night last night and the staff worked fucking exceptionally well. Um, straight after I left, um, Brian came downstairs and started being a cantankerous old bat. Um, right, I'm just going to have a word with him. Yeah. In fact, both of them, because I'm getting a little bit fucking pissed off. The minute my back's turned, and then what was his complaint to you this morning? Um, it was generally that um, he doesn't want to see any of his plates being binned, he doesn't want anything being different, he came round to call his knives out. Um, it was just generally, um, this is our business, this is our home, things aren't going to be changing as much as anybody thinks, we're still going to be doing it our way and nobody's going to say any different. He's and what stuck he in his ways. I'm pissed off, really. Yeah, but how pissed off are you? On a scale of one to ten? Yeah. I give it a good seven. Unbelievable. Two days to go and he decides to screw it all up. At 62 years of age, it's becoming really fucking clear that you can't teach an old dog new fucking tricks. I'm nearing the end of my week at the Fennec Arms, where I'm trying to save Brian and Elaine from the jaws of bankruptcy. 
But just when I thought we'd turned the corner, Ryan's gone behind my back and told his staff he won't accept my changes. I want to get it out with you now because I don't mind going. I'd rather go and see my wife today than sit here and fucking bang my head against the wall. If you're not prepared to accept the changes, you've got to tell me. And the nitpicking, I, I, do, do, do you know what? You, you've got to balance it out with some confidence and a little bit of encouragement. As we, I said to them this, this morning, right? Just remember, we are the bosses. It's not a power struggle. You are definitely the owners. Just cut them a little slack. You'll be surprised. You know what we're acting like? Small children, aren't we? Thank you. They're busting their nuts off for you right now. They're busting their nuts off for you right now. That's I... not for me. That's for you because you pay their fucking salaries, not me. And when you're worried about your villa and rock fucking plates that no one's changing, fucking come and tell me. Yeah? Because I'll smash them over your fucking head. He better have listened this time. I'm only here for two more days and a bigger concern is that it's Sunday on a bank holiday weekend and the pub is virtually empty. Um, Sunday lunch uh, normally this quiet or? Sunday lunch is a bit hit and miss. Some weeks you can have quite a few in, other weeks you can have maybe six or ten in. Here we are sat at a quarter to 25 covers done. I mean we should be having a second seating coming in now for Sunday lunch. But thank God only 25 people are going to eat the miserable looking roast they're serving today. It's coated in yet another disgusting brown sauce. Is that Brian's recipe? Yeah. yeah. It's a revolting concoction of gravy granules and reduced red wine. I may have kicked Brian out of the kitchen, but unfortunately his influence still lingers on. I suppose we could always fucking retile the roof on that fucker, can't we? Look at that. Fuck me. Why is it so dark? But the Yorkshire puddings are actually pretty impressive. What a shame they're going to be ruined by Brian's disgusting gravy. Why isn't this place packed out for a Sunday lunch? We don't know. We just don't know. We have no idea. It's... Um, we've tried different menus. Yeah. We've had bigger, we've had shorter. We've tried all sorts. Yeah. But... Look how busy the fucking road is. Yeah. You should yeah. be fucking ramming them in Sunday lunch. Yep. Turnover needs right. to increase by at least £2,000 a week. I think Sunday lunch holds the key to solving the problem. But there's only one thing Brian's gravy is good for. Yeah, we're saying goodbye to the gloop. Hello to gravy. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> fucking hell! <laughs> we got some tarmac! <laughs> OK. One thing we're going to do now is make a proper gravy, yes? When was the last time we made a proper gravy? Uh, years ago. Years ago? Yeah. Fresh oil in there, yeah? And carrots, leeks, celery, yeah? Yeah. And it's really important to make the gravy in the tray the meat was roasted in. And now, stock. Beef stock, yeah? Bring that up to the boil. Yeah. Right. And when I... When I pass this through a sieve, I want to see the bottom of the tray. Yeah. yeah, nice and clean, yeah? What happens, all the vegetables start to go through the sieve. Yeah. So it naturally thickens the gravy. Out, and look, gravy. This has given me a great PR idea that's going to appeal to Brian's eccentric personality and give the Fennec Arms the boost it so desperately needs. That was an over busy lunch, was it? No. no. And we took how much? Oh, I didn't do it. Yeah. 400 quid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight of us on there. Barely enough to pay the wages. Barely enough. Yeah? The penny dropped for me today. You know that. Why can't this place become famous for gravy? Brilliant idea. Look at these things. They're amazing. You've got the amazing potential to have a fantastic Sunday lunch. Bring back real gravy. This place will be fucking heaving. How? Yes. How? You go. You get on the streets and you just announce, oh. okay, <laughs> that you you've got a campaign to launch real gravy at the fucking Fennec Arms. <laughs> yes? 
a campaign to launch real gravy. Hey, it sounds a little bit fucking doolally, <laughs> but why can't you just turn it around and get out on the street with the team, yeah? Yes. Give us a word. Yes, we will launch the campaign. <laughs> <You> Rip. <laughs> <laughs> As I hoped, Brian is well and truly sold on the campaign. Join the campaign for real gravy! <laughs> Join the Fennec Arms for real gravy! His troops are armed with Yorkshire puddings and jugs of gravy. And we're ready to hit the streets of Kirby Longsdale. Yorkshire pudding and just a little bit Join of gravy there. Join the campaign Thank for you. real gravy! Sir? Sir? Oh, sir. Real gravy, there we are. No more shoes, no more sauces, real gravy! No more saps, no more vinegars, just real traditional British gravy! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> bollocks to Fisto, bollocks to Maggie! The campaign for real gravy starts at the Fennec Arms Clapton! The centre of the universe for real gravy! <laughs> nice. Great word of mouth publicity is unbeatable, and Brian and the team have done a brilliant job making damn sure the Fennec Arms is the talk of the town. We want gravy! Not just any gravy, but the real gravy! We relaunch tomorrow. And when word spreads about the real gravy, the pub should be packed out. There you are. Join our campaign. Real gravy. It's my last day, and there's still a lot to do before tonight's relaunch. First impressions count, so there's no point launching a big PR campaign if the place looks a dump when the punters get here. Have a look at that sign. It cheapens the place, and it just sends the wrong messages. You know that? Huh? And I, I want to see the Fennec Arms, so that banner, you know, that's got to go. And the whole place just needs sprucing up a little bit. Little jet hose the front and just get it nice and vibrant. While the front of house team spruce up the exterior, I've suggested to Brian that he gets back on eBay and starts selling off his huge crockery collection. I've got ten of those and they're starting off at 46 quid each. I may have done the impossible and got Brian selling his plates, but I've got a feeling he won't find staying out of the kitchen so easy. I need Elaine to keep an eye on him when I'm gone. There's one person that can make sure that he doesn't go back to his old ways, is you. Yeah, yeah. I, shall, I shall remind him. I think he'll listen. You've got to keep him, keep him out up. of that kitchen. You, you cannot let him back in there. I just think he was frightened of being... Um, Jobless. Just put on the shelf and forgotten about. Yeah. And he, he didn't want to feel as though they could manage without him, even though he no. knew that. No. It's the same with me. But he's I got mean, that competition I've... streak in him. He's 62, though. He doesn't need to be that competitive with his staff. No, he doesn't. No. But you could see the passion he's had. Oh, God. 30 years? Yeah. Yeah, easily. Like I said, there's not many that have lasted that long. But it's about time he started to enjoy it a little bit, no? Tonight we're relaunching the Fennec Arms as a great British pub. The Real Gravy campaign has done the trick. Bookings have been pouring in all day. Good afternoon, Fennec Arms. On a normal Tuesday night, Brian and Elaine would be lucky to get 20 customers, but there's already 88 booked in for tonight's relaunch. Eight o'clock. Yeah, we could maybe do it going on towards half past. In the kitchen, I've put together a new menu of no-nonsense, tasty British pub favourites. There's hearty pea and ham soup, and the all-time classic, yeah. a simple prawn cocktail. A few prawns in the middle. Good. Yeah, what's the secret behind the prawn cocktail? Good prawns. Good prawns. Lovely Mary Rose sauce. And a little bit of apple. The apple and the lettuce, yeah? Just really make it nice and zesty. All these dishes use great ingredients, prepared simply and presented without fuss, just like this pressed ham terrine. When we think about something like a pub, you know, it's, it's rustic. So keep the food rustic, yeah? So in terms of presentation, dots and fucking bits and bobs, get it on there. That's it. End of story. 
All the chefs have impressed me this week, but I think Karen's got the maturity to run the kitchen. So you're going to take the reins? Yep. You are, yeah? Yeah, definitely. And what happens if he starts to change things again? What are you going to do? Put my foot down. Oi, go away. You put your foot down? Yeah. Yeah? Be tough. It's time to show Brian and Elaine their new menu. I've replaced their complicated fussy food with 25 classic pub dishes. Surprise, surprise. Simple, straightforward, honest British pub food, yeah? And nothing too quirky. I'm well impressed. Roast, rib of beef, stunning Yorkshire puddings, jug of gravy, fish and chips, beautiful sausage and mash, Lancashire hot pot, and apple and blackberry crumble. I'm proud of what I can see. The secret behind this menu here, and being completely traditional in terms of pub food, is just the speed it can fly out at. Yeah? With two sittings in the dining room, the chefs will be under pressure. But it's Brian and Elaine I'm worried about. If they can't relax and speed up the service, we'll be screwed. Do we say our prayers now? <laughs> I'm shaking like a leaf inside. I don't know whether I'm on this planet, next planet, but I'm definitely on a traditional pub planet. He better be. The pub is packed out tonight, but if Brian and Elaine are going to start paying off their huge debts, this can't be a one-off. 16 minutes from the start of the main course, Karen. Two roast beef. It's keep fantastic. it like this. First table, keep yep. it like this, yeah? Rapido. Okay. Here we go. Ooh. And last of those cobwebs. For the first time ever, they're aiming to fill the dining room twice over so they can't waste time pouring wine or gravy for the customers tonight. Mr Foster, yes, you've got him on table four. Right? Oh, it needs to be on three, sorry. Right. Did you wait long? No. 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 Five, no. Five minutes. Perfect. Gravy happy with? Gravy and Yorkshire pudding sensation. Fantastic. So far, so good. The kitchen seems to be coping well under pressure. No, just be careful. All these main courses flying out now. Dessert's next. Right, how many have we done? Uh, I'm getting about 40-ish, maybe yeah, a bit more. I'm about 45, just going up to 50, yeah? Over halfway, yeah? Keep it going, yes? But out front, there's a disaster waiting to happen. It's 8.30 and they're slipping into old habits. The bar is full of people waiting to be seated. Brian and Elaine haven't got the first customers off the tables yet. Uh, Brian, we've got a bit of a queue forming, yeah? Can we yes. sit some guests down? Yes, we're just yes. trying to get them to move the tables okay. to sit them down. If they don't move, tell right, me. Right, where's the Rioja? Um, I'll get somebody to bring the bill for you. Thanks. We've got to get them out of these tables now. You know that's where yep. we've got to be firm now, yes? Yep. What are you finding hard at transition? It's not a restaurant, it's a pub. Yep. So don't be scared after one, one hour, 55 minutes. Would you mind taking coffee in the bar or come and have a drink in the bar? Change those tables. Yep. If you don't do that in the next 15 minutes, we're going to be in the fucking shit. Have you got a bill for table that one, whichever one it is? It's been touch and go, but at last the second sitting are at their tables. That's the hardest thing right now, isn't it? Yeah. Got to turn it around. And for the first time ever, it's starting to run like a pub. The Fennec Arms is buzzing. The real gravy is being lapped up, and traditional pub food has hit the spot. I had roast beef, and it was so good. It's with real gravy on it. Nice. Lovely. If Brian and Lane can keep up the pace, they might just pull this off. I mean, hell, it's, it's a lot of excitement. The adrenaline is absolutely pounding through me. Evening all, everything fine. Evening, it's fine. It's been a huge success. And finally, the pennies dropped for Brian. He's realised that the kitchen runs better without him. I think the team have just been unbloody believable. They've done it. I've not been there. I've not had to come in and where's this, where's that, where the other. And I am just so proud of them all. Wow, what a night. At times this week, I've seriously doubted it was possible. But tonight, the Fennec Arms has been transformed from a stuffy dining room into a vibrant packed pub. How much money do we take? The till. Yep. 
tells me we've done 2,447. Yes, get in there. Oh. Yeah. Fantastic. 2,000 pounds more than last Sunday lunch. Yeah. Brian, what does that tell you? Changing the menu and doing it simpler yeah. has worked. Yeah, well, since I've been here, that was the first night I witnessed all of you running a pub. And, and I'm not going to come back to what I came and saw a week ago, yes? No, you're not. No. No Chef White's, no knife rack. Nope. Nowhere nope. near it. Nope. No. Um, there was one, one little problem. I found a Barbie plate. <laughs> Please, Eddie, wrap it up in tin film, dig a hole and hide it, yes? <laughs> Promise me? Yep. Good man, go. Eddie! Oh, no! <laughs> Eddie! A month ago, I left Brian and Elaine running a busy pub. I'm dying to find out if they've kept it up. I'm on my way back to surprise them for Sunday lunch. The car park's looking full. Always a good sign. And the last Sunday I was here, they struggled to serve 22 people. Good. Campaign for real gravy still there. Menu. We can notice it this time. Good evening, good afternoon. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very thank you. Where's Brian? In the kitchen. He's where? In the kitchen. He's in the kitchen. What in the fuck is going on? <laughs> what in okay. the fuck are you doing in here? Hello. Hello. I thought you were that... doing the Great Northern Run. What are you doing dressing those? Working. <laughs> Why? Because I haven't got anybody else. Oh, for God's There's sake. There's only Sharon and Christmas Day off today, so I'm on my own. It turns out just one week after I left, Brian was back in the kitchen and yes. Nathan left to go back to college. Oh, fuck me. Brian! Yes, God. I, I cannot believe I've just found you back in the kitchen. Couldn't get any staff. And we're just trying to recruit to replace the one who went. Because Bloody hell. What else is back? Uh, Truthfully, before I start rummaging around and looking for it. Some of the plates. Oh, no. Yep, some of the plates. <laughs> that was... Oh, no. Why? Because what you taught us was listen to your customer. Oh, here we go. So, so we did. So your customers are saying, bring back square plates. No, what they wanted was the wow factor on the food again. That's what they wanted. What do you mean, the wow factor on the food? It's a pub, Brian. Yes, but if you're starting to become a restaurant slowly, within a month, you're destined for trouble. We went a little way down the road, but yep. kept the menu basically along the lines of what you were saying. Prawn cocktail still on there? Yes. Yeah, we've changed that. You've changed that? Yeah, it's we've not done in the, the wine prawn. Glass. It's not in the wine glass. No. Um, we've done it the way that. We've always done it. Go on. And it sells exceptionally well. Oh, here we go. How did you used to serve the prawn cocktail before I put it in a glass? Remind me. Uh, scallop shell. Oh, with for it on, sake. scallop shell. But it sells and the customers Brian. like it. Brian. Yep. Prawns don't live inside scallop shells. Nope. But they don't live inside glasses either. Oh, <laughs> oh fuck me. <laughs> Fucking hell. The good news is that thanks to the Real Gravy campaign, in just one month, Sunday lunch takings have doubled and the overall turnover is up by 30%. I'll start with a prawn cocktail and a scallop shell, please. Yeah, it hasn't got mashed potato pipe around the outside, has it? Yes. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> so this is Brian's wow factor. He really is a stubborn old bat. I'll do it myself. Nice. That's what I expect to see a prawn cocktail. No problem. Mm. Brian is making an incredible 250 litres of gravy a week, and I'm not surprised people are flocking for this roast. Oh my God, the size of the portions, extraordinary. Nice gravy. And nothing farted around with, do you know what I mean? Lovely. Mm. I don't think there's a beef, a Yorkshire pudding, anywhere in the country today that could have matched what you served me for lunch. Thank you. So, Thank you. you know, don't piss around with it. You don't need to. And whilst I'm slightly concerned 
that you're back in the kitchen, I hope it's for a temporary it is. time only. It is. Because if I talk to this lady in six months' time, God forbid, and you've popped your fucking clogs in there on that stove, I'll be fucking furious. Get out of there. Run your pub, not your kitchen. Please. I will. And I'm absolutely confident that the way you have set us up, the way the menu is set up, is going to work. Look at me and tell me. Yes. Will you let go? Yes. Because if you do let go, there's every chance that this is going to work. You know that. Brian is full of surprises. He's got a new reason to log on to his computer. He's running the campaign for Real Gravy website. September 34,500 hits. In one month? In one month. 34,500? Yeah. It's, it's fucking fantastic. Yeah. 34,500 people logging on to find out more about the Fennec Arts. Do me a favour now. Start thinking about your next campaign. And I know what it should be. Campaign for a real prawn cocktail. Now you're taking the piss. <laughs> I'm not taking the piss. <laughs> you were taking the piss, serving it in a fucking scallop shell. Uh, good luck. Thanks very much. Good night. night. Thank you. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye. Fucking hell. Scallop shells in a prawn cocktail. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. 30 years. This week, I'm in Norfolk, home of Alan Partridge. But he's not the only one-hit wonder in town. Shit! Step forward, Michelin star winner, Nick Anderson. And as soon as you say, oh, I'm the chef owner of Rococo, they're, oh, wow, you know, it, it, it does stand for something. But Nick's stuck in the past, and he's about to lose the lot. Everyone's so dead stuck in a rut, and this place is going to fucking close unless you do something about it. Now he's got to say au revoir and aha to his former glories. It's, it's, it's trophies, isn't it? Right now, they're going in the fucking bin. They are history. Bring it on. I can't spell it any clearer. We are fucked. Kings Lynn, a traditional market town on the Norfolk coast where the order of the day is cheap and cheerful local crab. Unless that is, you're eating at Rococo, one of Kings Lynn's most expensive restaurants run by former Michelin star winner Nick Anderson. I'm very proud to, when people say, you know, who are you and what do you do? And as soon as you say, oh, I'm the chef owner of Rococo, they're, oh, wow, you know, it, it, it does stand for something. Or at least it used to. Now Rococo is struggling to survive. The debts are mounting and uh, there's no real clear way forward. Nick's losing £2,000 a week and is facing closure. And if that wasn't tough enough, he lives above the restaurant with his wife and two kids. They'll all be homeless if Rococo goes under. My first thought is for the boys. Because what would we do? I mean, we'd have no, mo we'd have no money. Oh, it would just be so depressing and miserable. We used to be very, very busy, and I don't think we're doing anything differently, and we're just not getting the people. It's like, you know, you've organised a, a special party and everybody's decided they're not going to bother coming. I'm here in Kings Lynn, and I've got just one week to save Rococo from ruin and put Nick back in the game. Well, I really, really, really hope he'll like Nick's food. I'm reasonably confident he's not going to sort of put his fork down and go, that's disgusting or minging or anything like that. I'm fairly confident that my food will, will stand the test. Beautiful church. How fortunate. And your restaurant being next to that. Jesus. Looks like a fucking sofa bed in the window. Hello. Hiya. How are you? Hi. How are you? Good, very Lawrence. Well, Lawrence, good to see you. Um, is Nick here? He is indeed. Thank you. This is uh, quaint. Cool, it's very small, isn't it? Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Good to see you. 
How are you? I'm all right. So warm. Yeah, you look very warm. <laughs> huh? Very hot. It's boiling in here. It doesn't seem very busy out there. No, it's just falling away all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, tonight, eight people. Yeah, on a Saturday night, on eight, a Saturday. eight customers yeah. booked. So how would you describe Rococo? Rococo is a full a la carte restaurant. Yeah. Um, what style of food is it? Modern British. I mean, we're in the height of summer now, so everything's sort of. Well, light. I'm about. I'm about. To, I'm about to have a menu change. This is. We're just coming at the end of the spring menu now. We're going into the summer. Mm -hmm. Spring. Um, we're in the fucking July. Spring um, was. Yeah. Two months ago. Well, I'm right. Right. I'll go in the dining room. I'll see you after lunch. Okay. Thank you. Right. Oh dear. Tiny kitchen. Jesus. It's like going to visit your gran. I'll read the menu here. It's so claustrophobic in here. Huge sofas and a little quaint room. Oh, shit. And may I have a glass of um, orange juice, please? Yeah, with pleasure. Ice. Um, is it cold? With ice, it will be. And the orange juice is already chilled, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it fridged? Yeah. Yeah, well, no ice then. Thank you. No ice. Smart ass. Pan roasted diver scallops with cauliflower puree, white raisin, and caper dressing. Mm. That sounds very familiar. Yeah. Nick's got one of my dishes on the menu. Please. He's been cooking for as long as I have, and he's charging top London prices. So I just hope his food measures up. First test, a fish soup. Excellent. And, uh, smells off. Well, that's certainly seen better days. I just hope I won't be saying the same about Nick by the end of the lunch. Ah, oh, you bastard. It's not working very well. Next, mushroom and a duck egg on toast, and it's one of my favourites. When it's done how I like it, simply. Why is it supposed to be looking like something out of a fucking Barbie's doll's house? Why can't it just look simple, plain, and mushrooms on toast? It's like eating a wet flannel. Soggy, horrible bread. Mushrooms are dirty. Nick's obviously a frills man, but if he's got any sense, he'll serve the next dish as it was intended, because it's one of mine. And where did this dish originate from? I can tell you where you thought the idea up. You couldn't? No. No. Go and ask him for me, will you? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Where did you get the idea for the scallops? Oh, for fuck's sake. Thank fuck I don't serve mine like that. They taste frozen, unfortunately. Milky no. and, uh, yeah, rubbery. So they tasted like they were frozen, they were milky. Scallops? Try one, yeah. They're not frozen. They're They're fresh scallops. Nick's got to be joking. He'd better put a smile on my face with the next dish because so far this lunch has been miserable. It's nearly there. Just wondering if there's any point in sending it, to be honest. If I were you, Nick, I wouldn't keep me waiting. There we go, Lawrence. You like a hemorrhoid in my asshole, you know that. Can I just sit and enjoy, or try to enjoy, rather mm -hmm. than trying to dissect everything I eat? Otherwise, you may as well fucking sit down here and take my place. Would you mind? No, no problem at all. Thank you so much. Enjoy me up. I'm nervous. I say stupid things that I don't mean. At least you're not having a cut for it. That sauce is so sweet, it's unbelievable. The duck itself actually tastes quite nice, but then it's marred with all that horrible sauce. It's almost like benelin and baby veg. 20 quid as well. I mean, you know, even by London prices, that's, you know, that's up there. And there's someone here that's trying to be flash. And he may have got away with that in the 90s, but in 2006, his days are numbered. <sighs> right. Nick, you're not going to like what I'm about to say. I expected a nice, quick, fast, easy lunch. And unfortunately, everything was painful. You know, mushrooms on toast was supposed to be mushrooms on toast. I got something that was incredibly soggy, full of grit, and just looked horrendous. The duck was fucking delicious. And then everything else around it was so unnecessary. Right. You were fucking successful 10 years ago, and you had a big following. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, nothing has moved on. No. You're in the bubble, and I'm about to burst it. Sunny's laurels, clearly cooking still from the 90s era. 
touch success, but that fizzled very, very quickly. Even his own customers haven't sort of hung around long enough to tell him how fucking long-winded the food's become. So it's, yeah, it's quite sad in a way. And um, he's clearly not cooking for King's Lynn, he's cooking for his ego. I feel slightly deflated. I didn't think I'd get as much criticism as I got, but, hey, I'm yeah. a big boy. I'm not a 20-year-old, I'm not going to cry, I'm 40, so... Yeah. Bring it on. This week, I'm in King's Lynn to help Nick Anderson, a chef who once had a Michelin star. That sauce is so sweet, it's unbelievable. It's almost like Benelin. But after eating his food yesterday, I'd say his glory days are long gone. I expected a nice, quick, fast, easy lunch. And unfortunately, everything was painful. Four years ago, Nick was flying high running a successful restaurant at the Crown Hotel in Wales. I had a business turning over a quarter of a million pounds a year got to six out of 10 in the Good Food Guide, two AA rosettes, and a Michelin star in 2001, uh, 2002, 2003, three years. But in 2004, Nick crashed and burned when he and his backers parted company. He's never got over it. It was a very tough time leaving Wales and um, obviously very emotionally draining. We just found out Susanna was pregnant. Uh, obviously, I then had the best part of a year on the dole, um, bankruptcy, and trying, obviously, to, to find some way of getting back. Nick opened Rococo, hoping to get back on his feet, but with no-one coming in to eat there, he's now hemorrhaging money. This morning, I want to know what the locals have got against Rococo. Hello. How are you both? Thank you. Have you been to Rococo's? No, I haven't. No? Have you heard about Rococo's? I have heard about it. What's the reputation in King's Lynn at the moment? It's quite expensive, isn't it? And when you look at it, you think, are you going to get value for money? I think probably too pricey, too small a portions. I don't know, is King's Lynn too small for a restaurant like Rococo's? They've hit the nail on the head, except for one thing. It's not King's Lynn that's the problem. Rococo's has gone way past its sell-by date. I mean, pretentious food, stuffy service, and fucking ridiculous prices. Even for London, ridiculous prices. Before I can drag Nick into the real world, I want to find out how he runs his kitchen. So I've arranged to meet him and his sous chef, Tim Samford, before tonight's service. How are you today? I'm very well. Nice yeah. to see you. Good to see you too. Hello. Hello, chef. How are you? I'm OK. Yeah. Gordon. Yeah, Tim. And you're the sous, obviously the sous chef. Well, yeah, the chef, chef, yeah. And is it the only chef you ever worked for? Of this calibre, yes. What was it like last night? Dead as a dodo. Absolutely no one. No one in at all? No. Fuck me. That's extraordinary. How do you leave the boredom? How do you stimulate yourself in terms of coming up with new ideas? And it sounds absolutely dreadful, but sometimes I do watch Ready, Steady, Cook, and I pick up little things on that, yeah. Fuck me. Yeah, I know, it's dreadful. You're the first chef I've ever, ever met that's becoming... that's become excited and stimulated on the back Very of your Ready, Steady, Twat. Um, just take me through your fridges, like meat fridge, where would that be? So I have my, my duck, my lamb. Good little sausages. They sound nice, Toulouse. Are they actually from Toulouse? Yes, they are. Amazing. This is basically fish trimmings, scallop corals for fish soup. Rice pudding, mm -hmm. Madeleine mix. Right. Nick's fridges are packed with the best ingredients, but no one's coming to eat it all. Is he mad? You have the most extraordinary ingredients, you know that? And if you don't sell it, you eat it. Yeah, things like, you know, meat and fish. So really, it's a big advantage the restaurant being fucking empty, because you live like a king. Amazing, no? Style food here, Tim, must be fucking extraordinary. It is. Huh? Yeah. Well, you look well on it. Thank you. Fuck me. If Nick's in trouble, he could be buying cheaper produce on his doorstep. So why isn't he? With things like the shrimps in the freezer, yeah. you're on, the, you're on an estuary, you know, 20 miles. We, we struggle to get them fresh. We always used to be able to get them fresh. No. Seriously. You mustn't forget, I have been doing my homework. Yeah, yeah. I've been here, I know how many boats are still active. The fisher fleet, the fisher fleet. I can tell you what they caught on Saturday. I can tell you what's in the market tomorrow morning, trust me. OK. Oh, fuck me. I get the feeling Nick's having me on. Is in cuckoo land. Everything has to look immaculate with the best of cheeses and the best of sausage and the best of rack of lamb. He's in King's Lynn, yeah, not sat in the fucking harbour of Monaco, and every customer hasn't got five grand to blow on a fucking bottle of wine. Before I tackle the business, I need to see what Tim and Nick are capable of, and so I want to watch them in action during a busy service. But things have sunk so low at Rococo, the only way we've been able to fill the place tonight is by rounding up Nick's friends and some local business people. And when you opened, you know, 91, was the food the same then? No. The duck egg with what mushroom? I thought that was 
part of the history in terms of being on the menu for a decade. It wasn't from the very beginning, but it was a dish, a dish that sort of came along probably not, yeah, not long after. 94, something like that. For 12 years then, not 10 years. Yeah. Nick's menu belongs in a museum, not a restaurant. But I suppose with 12 years of practice, service should be a doddle. Baby veg is such a throwback to the 90s, but Nick's obviously very attached to them. OK. That's finished. Yep. Yeah. Well. Have one. Is this slow or is it me? Is this normal pace of service? Yeah. Nick's so busy primping and preening, he seems to have forgotten the whole point of being a chef, feeding your customers. Sorry about the delay, guys. That's OK. That's not normal for that to sit there so long like that, is it? No, I fucked up. I forgot the black pudding and I dropped the pom puree into the uh, sauce for the halibut. Fucking hard work. Everything just seems so difficult, so long winded. Kitchen soulless. There's no atmosphere, there's no, no oomph. For someone who's earned his stripes, Nick's making a hash out of tonight's service. Shit! Oh, I just lost my fucking red wine reduction. I'm beginning to think this is a man who's lost the plot. The salad's died in the heat. Bit like it's fucking creator. So how was that for you? Absolutely horrendous. Is that the normal way to work? It's certainly the way that I've worked, yeah. I'm worried because there's so much fucking around that goes on that is so unnecessary. You're screwing yourselves. Painful. It's like open heart surgery without an anaesthetic. It's fucking piling crap on top of crap and using crap on crap. Everything is fucking so fucking over tweaked in a way that you've just gone past any form of normality with food. You think that the more I add and put in, it's just going to get better. But it's not. Less is more. slagged everything off about my food. I'm disappointed because I think he could have at least said something along the lines of, I can clearly see you can cook meat. I can clearly see you can cook fish. He could have said something positive to keep our morale up. I do feel... <sighs> choked. Last night, I could see just how much of a rut Nick has got himself into. Sticking with the same old food has stifled his cooking and ruined his business. I need a way to get him thinking about the future and not the past. I spotted a collection of old food guides he's been holding on to. I'd like him to let them go. Who wants to come in and read the good food guide? It's, it's, it's trophies, isn't it? Because you're in there, aren't you? Yeah. That's the kind of stuff you have upstairs, yeah. yeah, for, you know, your your little meditation time, you know, you know, when you've had a real shit night and you're slightly concerned and you want to sort of, you know, increase the size of your cock. You lay on the bed and cover yourself in all your good food guides. When you get a write-up in a guide, they've judged you for what? For that year. The previous year? Yes. Yeah. By then, you you moved on. Yes. So you're reminiscing. Right now, they're going in the fucking bin. Colin, I'll hold the bag open and you can get them in. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how much we paid for them, you know. 15 years of history, 15 years of everything else, of course it's sad. It's difficult sometimes to accept change is necessary. Um, it really is. Nick's road to recovery is just starting. He needs to embrace change, but after a decade working with the same dishes, I wonder if he can actually cook anything new. Things have got slightly static in terms of creativity. Yes. Come here, my little fucking Rottweiler. Sorry, shit. You mentioned to me the other day about ready, steady, twat. Yeah? Oh, no. no, 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 don't look at me like that. Come back to me with some form of inspiration. There's ingredients. Let's look. I've bought some basic local ingredients, and I'm giving Nick and Tim just 20 minutes to come up with some dishes that we can make money on. Onion, leeks, potatoes. And look at this baby here. Fresh. Beautiful. You've both got a bag each. So don't copy him, and you don't copy him. Fine. Ready? Yeah. How long? Steady. Cook. How long? Fucking hell, you know how long. 
This could be the first time in years Nick's faced a full-sized vegetable. Now you're fucking sweating, aren't you? You've seen it on telly. You sat there in front of the fucking sofa. Now you're fucking doing it. OK, Nick, please tell me you're not looking for a cutter. Where's my cutters? Where's my cutters? We. Nick, don't burn your mackerel. Don't get huffy with me. Come on, Nick. Ten seconds to go. Three, two, one, serve. Thank you. Well done, Timmy. Good. Nick, what is it? Just simply grilled mackerel, a little mm -hmm. bit of thyme, some lemon juice. Good. Got it some mackerel on a bed of sautéed potatoes with garlic and butter. Would you serve that dish in your restaurant? I think so. Good. Would you serve this dish in this restaurant? No, I wouldn't. Why not? Because I think it's crap. It needs a lot of work doing to it. You think it's crap? Yeah. And it needs a lot of work doing to it? Yeah. Mackerel, right, so you fitted it? Yes, it is, yeah, so I can cook it quicker and gutted mm -hmm. it. You are so paranoid, it's unbelievable. Presentation's there for 30 seconds. It's it the flavour that holds the memory. It's oh. the flavour that holds the memory. Yeah. Right, Nick, have a taste. Mm. Mackerel's nice. It's slightly bitter inside because the guts are still in there, unfortunately. Right. However, top of the mackerel's nice. I like that. Nick's buckled under pressure. Tim's held his own, but they both failed the most important test of all. The leeks and the potato, I wanted a soup as my starter. And then the fucking mackerel, I wanted filleted on a fucking warm potato salad. <laughs> Nothing more. Boom, boom. Starter main. Yeah? £2.38, I've got to make money because I've got to fucking open my business tomorrow. OK? So you, dosed, you both chose to do one dish. The winner is... None of you. Yeah. Clear down. I'm so frustrated because I can't get anything out of fucking Nick and I've got to make some big changes in this place, otherwise, uh, he's fucked. It takes a little while for things to sink in with me. I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, really, as a rule, I'm not an impulsive person. I don't act, you know, um, without thinking things through. And I, I fully suspect that Gordon's going to get even more frustrated with me as the week goes on but I'll probably get more frustrated with him. It's not just Nick I can't work out. If Rococo doesn't have any customers, how has Nick managed to keep the business and the family afloat for the past 18 months? I'm going to talk to his wife, Susanna. We don't go anywhere, we don't ever go out anymore since having the children, and there's nowhere to go, and we haven't got any money. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he needs a sort of real kick or a boost or a real something to uh, get him inspired again and I you know and when it's not busy and when it's crap like that you he just you know he's miserable which I suppose you would be anyone would be yeah fuck yeah how long can you continue staying open along these lines not long the thing that happens is every kind of six months Nick has a meltdown and goes everything's fucking shit everything's what we're gonna do what we're gonna do what we're gonna do we need some money we need some money if it hadn't been literally for, like, a month ago, a couple of friends stroke customers wanting to invest a little bit of money into it, I can't remember how much it was now, we w it would have gone, I think. If I had to close the door tonight... Yeah. I mean, fucking, bam. Yeah. Shut down. Yeah. How much do I owe tomorrow morning? A hundred. hundred grand? Yeah. You haven't got that? No. Has Nick got it? No. No. It's worse than I thought. Even though he's in £100,000 worth of debt, Nick's still shelling out on all the expensive produce he used when he was doing well. I need to get him to stop. He told me he couldn't buy shrimps on his doorstep. Well, I don't think he tried hard enough. And one thing I got fucked off last week with is when you said you can't buy fresh fucking shrimps. These guys go out every day. Hello, gentlemen. That looks like a good catch, that. He told me that he can't get fresh shrimps. <laughs> Are they fresh from this morning? Yeah. And is that a normal catch in the morning? That's just average. Average. And you give me shit because I get upset because yours are in the fucking freezer. Hello? <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, can I have a little taste? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Or do you want to stick to your frozen ones? Get your fucking ass on that boat. Let's go. Huh? Unbelievable. You'll turn around and say, no, let me get, let me get my frozen ones. Yes? Woo! They are beautiful. Uh, amazing. No shrimps, my fucking ass. Uh, beautiful.
See? Yeah. Frozen fucking shrimps. I went to the fishmongers, I told you. I went to the fishmongers. Another excuse. No more fucking excuses. <laughs> Nick's excuses won't get him out the financial shit, and I still don't think he's faced the fact that his spending habits have to change, and soon. Tonight, I'm allowing Nick to cook his menu for the final time. I'm going to do some tough talking to try and shake him out of his cocoon. The sauce is like varnish, aren't they? Why are they so heavy in the middle of summer? It's the only way I know how to sauce. Oh, fucking hell. The only way I know how to sauce. I wouldn't charge 20 quid for that in Chelsea. Nicholas. Enoki mushrooms. They look like fucking tadpoles on Viagra. Huh? Is it on there because it's oriental, the word Inoki? Yes. Poor bastards. Are you ready to stab me yet? No. Oh? What's the idea behind the two sauces? Resemblance of a pearl necklace I used to give on my ex-girlfriend. What a lo lovely portion of pork. Why'd you put the black pudding on there? It's a load of pressure school. Is there anything registering? Yeah. In terms of all that time we're wasting... Yes. Farting and fanning around, I think we can fit ten more people in and still get it done within the time frame. I feel like stripping you stark bollock naked and putting a fucking sign on saying, Customers, come and eat my food. I'm fucking serious. I just can't get anything out of him. It's so hard because he's like in a daze. When I poke him, I poke him for a reaction to wake him up, to get him out of that fucking acomatized attitude. And so every time I want to dig him in the ribs, I want someone to come back to me with something of a pair of bollocks. It's like he's sort of put it at the back of his mind. It's not really that important because getting all my potential ingredients is far more important than being 100 grand in debt. I can't spell it any clearer. We are fucked. This week, I'm in Norfolk to help shake a chef out of his culinary coma. Those sauces like varnish, aren't they? Why are they so heavy in the middle of summer? It's the only way I know how to sauce. Oh, fucking hell. Last night, I tried to get through to him with some tough love. Are you ready to stab me yet? No. This morning, I'm hoping to start afresh. Nick's in there, so why isn't he letting me in? Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Kick me out. Who the fuck do you think he is? I've taken some shit in my time, but this is the first time a chef has ever locked me out of a restaurant. I'll sit here and wait till fucking lunchtime. I'll go in as a paying customer. Fucking asshole. What's the matter? Fed up. Fed up. Can we talk? Yeah. Yeah? I bawled my fucking eyes out last night, Gordon. We're the same age. You, you, you've got two kids upstairs, you know, depending on this fucking succeeding. Uh, you know, so, you know, yes, you're pissed off. Yeah, you hate my guts, but let's just have a go at fucking working at turning it around. Don't want you cooking like that, because I think you can do better with half the frills. You can't give up. Was there nothing at all? about last night that you saw as even remotely good? If I didn't think it was possible to turn around, I wouldn't be here. And you wouldn't have asked for my fucking help. No. Unfortunately, the reason why you're more fucked off is the level of sensitivity. I'm glad you feel the way you do, because it shows that you care. Well, I'm certainly at the bottom, that's for sure. Well, at least he's talking to me now. So I'm going to strike while the iron's hot and hit him with my big idea. It's time to start from scratch. You're going to have to seriously consider changing the name. 
I need a unpretentious A name that people will. That's like, fuck me, get in there. Nick, any names? Not yet. There must be something in there. You just roll them out to me. Just shout, shout at me. For Who? once. Number 11? No, because there was yeah, no... too formal. The church is called St Margaret's. I don't know. Maggie's. No, no, it's got nothing to do with you. No, no. It's yeah. a new identity. I say maggots, you know, in terms of not casualness, but just unpretentious. Something that everyone can relate to. Nick, you're nervous of maggots? I'm not nervous, I'm just not that keen at all. Yeah, I'm just trying to throw options in the pot. We need a fresh start. The name is not critical. The change is crucial. I don't like the name maggots. I think... To me, it just says Maggie's Caravan stop and get a bacon roll. Here we go. While Nick can stew in his own juices over the loss of six letters of the alphabet, but he's not going to stop me tearing up his menu. Anything you're worried about? All that delayed silence. Fuck me, I can kill you. Okay. Well, Finally, a smile. I just hope he's happy with the new food. I've swapped his expensive ingredients for cheaper local alternatives so we can lower the prices. And these simple dishes can be prepared quickly. That is just a nice, summery, chilled, chunky, rustic, yeah, gazpacho. And there's a duck salad. Pan-fried mackerel on a bed of warm potatoes. One nice fillet. On. And a simple cheese souffle. Into um, your oven, please, Nick, a hot oven. 220, perfect. So you love the name Maggie's? Adore it, Chef. No, yeah. I hate it. You hate it? Why do you hate it? It just makes me think of somewhere that you pick up a bacon butty at the side of the road. Ready? Yeah. Sure. What's the alternatives? Nicholas. I'm beginning to lose patience with Nick. No answer. Time's running out. I don't know how long you think you've got, but I can't tell you any longer. Here, Mr. Anderson, we're scared of fucking change. No one wants to change anything because it's safe. Safe means we're I'm in the shit. No, I'm just trying to inject a bit of energy, but right now, like I said, no one's no one's with me on this one. No one's clean for changes, no one's dynamic for changes, and everyone's so dead stuck in a rut, and this place is gonna fucking close unless you do something about it. One, I'm pissed off more than anything. I don't feel anyone fucking pulling on the rope. Quite frankly, it's not good enough to sort itself out. That's why we're in the shit. So I don't feel that surge of support, that really sort of, you know, bang. This is all I've got in life. It's not there. It's not... So if they haven't got it, what fucking chance have I got? I can't work out why Nick won't let go of the past. I need help from people who know him best. First stop, Susanna. I can't, yeah. I can't work out whether it's just his pride yeah. or whether it's, you know, yeah. saying goodbye to Rococo. You're in King's Lynn. Yeah. You're not in Knightsbridge. He thinks Maggie sounds cheap and mm. he doesn't want his food to be cheap, but we're not turning it into cheap. I know. If he's not happy with that, why doesn't he come back to me with it? I know. I don't care if he calls it Frankie's, Maggie's, Uncle May's. I don't give a, I, I don't give a toss about that. No. Rococo's myth is feeding his ego. Nothing more. Yeah. But I swear to God, I look at that man in the eyes every morning and there's not a hundred grand of debt in each fucking eyeball. Yeah. That is wrong. Yeah. If Nick goes down, he's taken everyone with him. Wife, kids and his staff. It's an amazing place, an amazing setting, quaint fucking town hall, you know, an amazing square. This place should be fucking rammed. Yeah. People should be queuing up to stand in a queue to come and eat in here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they've got everything here. That's the way it is. Yeah. yeah. We've got to sort it out. I see someone that is hurting. Yeah. For what reason? Glory days, Michelin star? Possibly. Possibly, There's got to be a reason somewhere. I would have said that. Four years ago, Nick was top of the bill in Norfolk, and his stage was the Crown Hotel in Wales. But when he and his backers parted company, Nick had to leave the restaurant. I don't think he's ever got over it. This is where it hurts. Have you been back in there? Uh, not for a long time. No. Not for a long time. I brought you here to face your failures. I had a situation once when I had two mission stars in a restaurant called Aubergine. <clears throat> and I'd worked my fucking ass off for these guys for five years. And because I didn't want to go down the direction that they were going down, I cut the fucking cord and I got out of it. 
and it's been the most important fucking day of my entire fucking cooking career. You have to turn a new leaf. I've never been back in that door, and I've always wanted to go in there and just eat. But instead, Lisa just walked past. Yes. And there's like two or three bin bags outside the front door. And you know what? It makes me feel so happy because when I was there, I used to put out 18 to 20 bin bags. And that told me they're nowhere near as it's busy. busy. It, was, it was that moment where you think, the most important day in my entire life, turning the fucking leaf. And for the short time I've known you, I don't think you've ever turned the leaf. No. That was then, yeah? This is now. Why didn't the fucking penny drop earlier? I don't know, stubbornness, maybe? I don't know. I've been massaging my own ego with the food mm -hmm. without seeing the fact that... Why are the other restaurants busy? Because they're not trying to be pretentious. Mm -hmm. You have got to start afresh. Fucking move on. It's taken me the best part of a week, but I think Nick may have finally got the message. It's my last day in Norfolk. Tonight, we relaunch the restaurant, and there's good news. I've made a decision, Gordon. I'm going to run with Maggie's. Maggie's doesn't mean it's a fucking greasy spoon. No. In six months' time, the name is irrelevant, but it's the well, news. That's, that's where I got it's just to be perfectly honest. Why get yeah. all, all precious about it? Skip. Skip. Thank you, gentlemen. Now I need another miracle. We've got to get the people of Kings Lynn to give Nick's new restaurant a go. I just hope they can forgive his sins. I just want to tell you about our new restaurant. Okay. It's a replacement of Rococo's. Is that so, Marketplace? Yeah. Well, it used to be Rococo. No, you haven't, you liar. Yeah. No, you haven't. It's only just been called no, Maggie's no. today. We've changed the name, we've changed the interior. It's oh, affordable, okay. the food's great. Now I've got through to Nick, there's no stopping him. He's agreed to dump the intimidating 90s decor and replace it with a simple and fresh interior. Is it open tomorrow? So it's my birthday tomorrow. Yes, it is. is it? What time would you like to come? Um, tomorrow about eight o'clock. You've got a reservation there. Yeah. Well done. God, when you get going, you can't stop you. You know that, huh? We've only got a few hours left to clear out the final traces of Rococo before we throw open the doors at Maggie's. But something's already made it back in from the bin. Um, what is that? No. They're not going back. I'm just going to take them upstairs. You're taking them upstairs. You're going to lay on the sofa again and carry no. a fucking widget with them? No, no, no. What are you doing with the guides? Oh, it's history, isn't it? Just when I thought I was fucking getting somewhere. <laughs> Have you got any paraffin? <laughs> I never look at them, ever. Is your photo in any of them, Nick? No, there's never been photos. <laughs> you don't need them. Fuck me. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> What else have you sneaked back in? Nothing. Nothing. Finally, all the old-fashioned remnants of a cocoa have been stripped out, and in its place is Maggie's. Relaxed, informal, and most important, welcoming. I've created a fixed-price menu made up of modern rustic dishes. The big pull for the locals will be the cost. At £21, it's half the price of a cocoa. Big night tonight. Um, 44 booked. Oh, yes, 42, 44, yeah. Yeah. Can we take any more, Lawrence? Yeah. If we can do them? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. If Maggie's does 54 covers tonight, I'm running around that square and the cemetery, start bollock naked. <laughs> um, menu. Everybody happy with the menu? Yeah. Three starters, That's three good. main courses and three desserts, yeah? Okay. We've gone through all the fucking, you know, roller coaster, highly strung, highly emotional, upsetting, bullying. It's all gone. Tonight is the night. Really make it work. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you all for your very hard work this week. And let's make Maggie's work. If we get through this one tonight and he pulls it off, you know, I'll, I'll be a lot happier. Of course I'll be a lot happier. My worry is in the kitchen. Not with Tim, but with Nick. If he gets in the shit early on, let's hope he's got the charisma, the personality, the drive, the determination to get out of it. This is not just a man starting off afresh. This is a man that is desperately in the shit, up to his eyeballs, with 100 grand of debt, and fuck me, every plate he cooks, he has to really seriously mean it. Good evening. Three tables, let me know. Okay, one crispy duck salad on order. Yes, Two gazpacho. Yeah. Chicken mackerel lamb. Nice, absolutely stunning. 
two souffle, they're very hot, Lawrence. Please be careful, yes? Excellent. Start has gone within seven minutes. Fantastic. Maggie's is filling up with the locals. There'll be more people in tonight than Nick would usually have in all week. How long can you duck him? Ready when you are. OK, duck down. Yeah? Yes. Nice. Don't see it now, play it. Thank you. That's fine. That's, don't play with it. Don't play with it. Peas. Despite peas. the fact that we got rid of Nick's fancy ingredients, he's still fiddling. He can't afford to switch off tonight. What are those little burnt bits that we're taking there? What are they? Ash has to try some come peas. On. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Nick. Get Tim to put the peas and feathers around there. Tim, yes, get the peas and broadbeans. Don't keep on well, squashing it down so much. You've been looking hot yet. You over here. Calm down. Slow down, guys. And work as a team like you're sort of almost in love with each other. There you go. The new menu's doing the trick. The pace has picked up in the kitchen, but it's getting busy, and now Nick has taken his eye off the orders. You know that, guys? Table two is already gone. Thank you. What do you mean? Where's that ticket, please, Tim? What is going on? Thank you. That's all I want. What is going on? I don't know what's going on. This never happens. Okay. Just, just, Nick, stop, my man. Yeah, we're doing the same course again twice over. That's all right. The next order's a ch chicken and a mackerel. Come on, come on, Thank guys. You. Not tonight. I've all not, not tonight, yeah? I didn't, I didn't know you had a lemon there. I thought it was a chicken and a mackerel. Chicken and a mackerel. Take... Oh, take... Oh, take that one with you. Ah. Nick's just screwed himself. They've just started to cook one table's order twice over. Brilliant. It doesn't need to be as panicky as it is. Fuck me. This is home cooking. Big deep breath and just compose yourself and be comfortable doing three or four things at the same time and bring it together. The restaurant is now at his busiest. So if Nick doesn't take control now, we're in trouble. Oh, bollocks are sinking. Tim, we need two ducks now. Move it. Come on, service please. We've got three souffles out. Yep. There's the nine, doing it. Two souffle, three duck, yeah? Two souffle, three yes, duck. Yes, chef. Right, we've got seven chicken, two lamb, yeah? Yes, chef. And you've got your sides on the go, yes? Pardon? You've got your side orders on the go, chef. Two soup, saute. It's going to be carrots, Gordon. Finally, for the first time this week, I'm beginning to see Nick might just have what it takes to run his restaurant. Nine, eight, four, six, seven. Right, the souffle. 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Placing the chicken, Tim. Are you ready with that souffle? Nearly, chef. Finish with the duck, chef, Tim. We're through the worst. All the mains have been served, and I think Nick's even enjoyed himself. Just there, you know that, Nick. Just. So, Nick's had a good night, but I'll be back in favour with the locals. Prices are right yeah, for, exactly. for you yeah. to come and have a, a meal on, on a regular basis rather than yeah. just a special occasion, which it used to be. Definitely come again, definitely, definitely. Nick's got the stamp of approval. Making a fresh start has worked. So if Nick wants to bask in the glory again, he'd better stick to the new regime. How do you feel? Good. Good. Truthfully? Yes, truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. We've just taken about two and a half grand. We've got to a shaky start. Can you do it again tomorrow? That's the big question. Yes. You can, yeah? Good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. I can't do any more, and it's over to you now. Yeah. yeah. This is just the beginning, and it's going to go forward, and it's going to evolve, and it's going to get better and better and better. Um, and it's just that it will never be... It'll never be what it was, because clearly there weren't enough people coming for what it was, so it needs to be different. And watch this space. Tonight's service was a tough one. Tough, but we got there. Can they cope on the back of that performance tonight? It's going to be very tough for them to cope. Very, very tough indeed, because they're going to have to wake up in terms of... That's normal. I'm nervous about this one more than any other restaurant I've ever worked in because I don't feel that surge of excitement to get it right. Mr Anderson, we're scared of fucking change. No-one wants to change... Last anything. time I was in Kings Lynn, I spent the week trying to convince Nick Anderson that his glory days were long gone. Go on, argue with me. Come back to me. By the end of the week, we'd not just changed the food, we'd launched a brand new restaurant, Maggie's. Skip. Skip. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Seven weeks later, I'm back in Kings Lynn to make an unexpected visit. Nice, whole roasted lemon sole. Local. With cockle butter. Come on. Come on. Jesus. Wow. The first change is obvious. Nick's got customers. Nice buzz. Very nice, Buzz. 
Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Very well. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Chef, how are you? Very well, thank you. Timmy, how are you? Smashing. Smashing, good okay, man. Wait, thank you, table one. Me. Oh, dear, hey. You have got your shit together. Uh, seriously, uh, turnover? Um, we're, up, we're averaging four and a half to five grand a week. Two. Top week's been eight. Top week's been eight? Yeah. That's great. So, one big question. Have you got a spare table of one anywhere? Yep. Cool. Thanks fuck for that. I'm not coming all this way and not eating. The first thing that struck me when I walked in here, you know, was the buzz. The place is full, 47 couples on a Wednesday night. Kingsling's empty. You know, this must be the busiest place within miles. The exciting thing about the menu is everything's sourced locally, which is nice. Um, if it tastes as good as it reads, then it's down to him. He can't fuck this one. I'll go for the um, whole sole, the local sole, please, with the cockle butter. Um, and just maybe before I start, can I try uh, onion barge? I'm trying to figure out what the fuck they're doing here. Where did that one come from? Timmy, I think, suggested it. Timmy the cat. Timmy the cat. So far, so good. But I'm reserving judgment until after I've eaten. <laughs> Not the kind of thing you expect to find on the menu here. However, it's fucking delicious. So, who am I to complain? There is nothing pretentious about what's been put on the plate here. And the minute the food arrives, you don't think about some pretentious chef in the corner trying to massage his ego. It's good, honest, simple food. That's all it has to be. It's not fucking rocket science. Thank you. Lovely. And that's local. You haven't even asked me how my dinner is yet. Wouldn't even dream of it, not until you finish. I'll let you start, but it's cold. Fucking hell. Jesus. Fish. Cockled butter, parsley, sautéed local sets, and sautéed potatoes. Rustic, simple, and so unpretentious is extraordinary. And miles in front to what I experienced last time around here. But it was nice, Nick, very nice. Simple, honest, and uh, great flavours. For you, what's changed in terms of... I've got it. I've got it back in here. Have you, though? Yeah, really. Is it, is it in there? Yeah. This is the first time I can quite honestly say, and I mean really fucking honestly, you're cooking for your customers, not your ego. It's only going to be a matter of time before you're financially fucking stable. That, oh, we're yeah. nearly there already. Seriously? Batman's paid right up to date. All the supplies are back within 30 days. And all the wine supplies are paid up, up scratch. Yeah. Uh, Timmy, the barge was delicious, by the way. Good. Can I have the recipe, please? No. You tight little fucker. I fucking... I, I've given you my recipes. You've had a personality transplant, haven't you? Where did you get this from? A lot more chefs I'd like to give it to. Tell me where the shop is and I'll send the fuckers to it. All jokes apart, don't fucking change. No, I won't. And don't put your fucking ego in front of your customers. I'll show you the menu, I'll show you the menu no, no. tomorrow. Don't put your fucking ego in front of your customers. I won't. Your success is the buzz in that dining room. Definitely. The minute that buzz is gone, you're fucked. Yeah. Keep it there. Definitely. Yes? Yeah. Well done. Thank you. I really mean that. Thank you very Stubborn much. fucker, but well done. Yeah, I'm amazed. What a fucking turnaround. Extraordinary. Good, honest, simple food, local produce, great service. No bits of bullshit with olive oil and all pretentious crap everywhere. No fucking flea bitten sofa sat there. No canapes, just a really good evening. Nice buzz. And I really hope he fucking makes it. He's got a recipe for success here, and um, he'd be stupid to change it. Pretty good. Good. Maggie's done. How many women does it take to run a restaurant badly? Three, if it's called Morgan's. You better watch out because uh, we're going to get him. I'm grappling with girl power to save this restaurant. You with us? It's going to be handbags at dawn with Mum. Don't tell me to shut up, God. Okay. Because I won't be spoken to you like that. Okay. All right. And sibling rivalry is driving me demented. You tell these two okay. to do my role. Okay. And you can that okay. I'm sorry, there I can't stand you. Typical. Liverpool, a city that's shedding its run-down reputation 
with rocketing house prices and £3 billion worth of investment, it's rapidly becoming hip and trendy. 18th century Walton Village is one of the city's most affluent and exclusive suburbs. This is a typical sort of footballer's wives hangout. There must be a great catchment for ladies' lunch, especially with all these amazing houses. At Walton's heart lies Morgan's. Three years ago, Sandy Morgan was an antique dealer before she changed her shop into a restaurant. The idea actually started, we were actually having dinner one night and I just said, well, I used to cook for friends here. Now turn it into a restaurant and thought, great, why not? Sandy runs it with her two daughters, Helen and Laura. We've pulled together, fought together, we've laughed together, cried together. You, every emotion you can ever imagine. How we're all still talking to each other, I don't know. With no customers and £100,000 worth of debt, the women will lose everything in six months. Sisters are definitely doing it for themselves. <laughs> Maybe that's why we need a bit of a testosterone from Gordon. <laughs> thank you, thank you. From the outside, it looks very romantic. A perfect high street local eatery. Let's get some dinner. My name's Helen. Helen, how are you, darling? Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Likewise. And this, and this is... I'm Sandy. Sandy, please meet and you. And the mummy. What a beautiful place. <laughs> thank you. And this Hello. is... This Hi, is Laura. Laura, how Hello. are you, darling? I'm fine. Oh, this Welcome. is nice. Welcome. It's beautiful. Do you yeah. like it? And these girls serve here as well? Everything. All good all round as well. Every gone. single male in Liverpool should be in here today. <laughs> How many's booked? There's yeah. a table at two at half six. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, we're in September. Yeah. It's a sort of Indian summer's evening out there. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got two booked. Yeah, that's it. It needs a lot of tweaking. Yeah. <laughs> a lot Who's of running tweaking. the business? We all we do. Are. There's three of us. Oh, three of us taking responsibility for maybe one job. Yeah. Three managers. Sounds like too many chiefs to me. I better eat, yes? <laughs> <laughs> right. Beautiful little smart restaurant. Very romantic and everything's slightly uh, weird. Apricots in a cream mashed potato with Lincolnshire sausage. Vanilla and whiskey sauce served with a fillet of beef. This isn't the sort of menu that ladies who lunch want. Even I don't know what kind of menu this is. The food is... French English a la carte. We sort of bring in Thai influence, you know, um, Spanish. It's English a la carte, really. On one plate, sometimes you can get two or three different nationalities. Phil is Morgan's cocky but inexperienced head chef. You've got to be confident in your own ability, haven't you? Otherwise, put this between the chef. I need one soup, one prawns, one sausage, one beef pink, and one portion of veg. Bastard, any two starters, two mains. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely pan fried prawns. Smoked paprika. They're absolutely solid. I mean, really solid. No thought. Orange segments, lemon segments in there. And prawns that are just bullets. Hard, disgusting bullets. Cumberland sausage. Cumberland sausage, thank you. Thank you. This dish is big enough for a dinosaur. It's like something out of Jurassic Park. Sausage on T-Rex. Fucking hell. A cherry tomato with a mashed potato laced with fucking apricots. That is pretty dismal. This huge dish of overpriced stodge should be extinct. No wonder the locals aren't coming here. No one's going to sit down and, and, and even attempt to eat substantial mountains of food that doesn't make sense like that. Nowhere near it. Sticky toffee pudding with a butterscotch sauce in the ice cream. What? What? Junior sous chef Emma is Phil's long suffering sidekick. Her star turn is sticky toffee pudding, but Phil hates it. Babe, you know my feelings on this fucking. I know you don't like it, but. T1, I've always said it should not be on our menu. Trial and error. Neil turn around and go, what is that? What is that? And he'll be told, it's the Morgan's classic sticky toffee pudding. Whey! Mm, smell nice. <clears throat> For the first time this evening, I'm glad to be here. This is nice, light, mm. not too sticky. The person who made that dish doesn't put fucking apricot and mashed potatoes together and vanilla and whiskey. It's the verdict, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Got a care, haven't you? What he thinks. I do anyway. Hello, everyone. Here's Gordon. It's good Hello. to meet you. Emma, how nice are you? Nice to meet you. I'm fine. Good to see you. And you're the. 
Um, chef de party, dessert and starters. And this is? Phil. That's chef. Phil. Chef de cuisine. Yeah, well. Thanks, a differ. Well, yeah, 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 no, yeah. OK. Anyway, it started off good. I arrived and I thought it was actually quite a stunning, intimate little place. Then the food arrived. Solid rock-hard prawns. You dig deep and you come across the mashed potatoes got laced with fucking apricots, tomatoes and a red currant jus. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a red wine, syrup, red wine, wine syrup. syrup. What the fuck were you thinking about putting apricots inside mashed potatoes? Do you know what, right? I actually took the recipe from the Good Food magazine. The Good Food magazine? Yeah. That's the bullshit answer. What were you no, thinking about not. putting it together? Well, why not? It's different. You've got every right to be slightly fucked off about it. Because I would be if I cooked that shit. And here we are, in a current situation, on our ass, and the chef over there wants to fucking laugh about it. What the fuck do you want me to do about it? You're standing there fucking mouthing me off. Yeah, fuck do you know that. What I mean? You've just shown me over the last three minutes your attitude stinks. It's such and such And you can't take criticism. I can't take gonna... criticism. It's just ways and means of going about and putting criticism across. It's the way you speak. You speak arrogantly. How would you like to be spoken to? Yeah, just like a normal person, like anyone would speak to anyone. Uh huh. No, let's go the other way, shall we? Please be so kind to remove the apricots from the mashed potato. See, now you're being a fucking sarcastic. No, but I, 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 I don't know how. I mean, no, listen, no. we've got a problem here, yeah? And there's a fucking issue with the food. Mm. Now fucking Mr Chipmunk in the fucking corner's pissed off the fact that I'm telling him something constructive. See, if I can't get over that hurdle, no, there's no, there's no I may as well fuck off back on the train attacks. now. Do you understand? Have a, a have a word with the yeah. chef, yeah? yeah. And if he's going to fucking yeah, excuse me, I'm remove... Sorry, yeah. sorry, oh, sorry. sorry. If you want to talk to me, talk to me. I'm talking I'm to the owner. Like I'm a fucking kid. Fuck me. So did you like anything about the three courses? There was one saving grace, yeah, there was. The sticky toffee pudding was fucking delicious. No! <laughs> 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 oh, thank you, God. I just wish I had it for my you. fucking starter. You're welcome. Fuck, Foxy! <laughs> Shit dinner, beautiful restaurant inside, great potential. Then trying to fucking tell the chef some form of constructive criticism, he's got a problem, not just with his food, but with his fucking god. You've got every right to be slightly fucked off about it. Because I would be if I cooked that shit. Morgan's restaurant is an all-woman run business. Trouble is, it's not been run very well. And the chef over there wants to fucking laugh about it. You're standing there fucking mouthing me off. It's serving mountains of expensive stodge. But there's a much bigger problem. The women can't decide who's in charge. A recipe for disaster. It's a struggle sometimes, and you know, we kick off and we scream at each other and stuff. Do you know what's wrong with Arthur? Just is a nightmare, and I've resigned so many times. Sandy claims to be running Morgan's, but I wonder how good a manager she really is. I've decided to look at her accounts and find out. Come on. Right. How long have you been here? Uh, about two years. Nice. So where's the yeah. office? Sort of here. That's, that's the office there? Yeah. God. How do you manage? I don't. It's difficult. It needs uh, to be bigger. The desk needs bloody to be bigger. hell. It's hell, because I can't lay anything out. Well, look at it all jammed in there like I that. I know, I know. Sandy's account books are completely haywire. Where's your target? I need to do that. Yeah, but... No, I've... I, I've got These it. are just till... No, no, I've got that written down. I have got that written down. Where's that? Um, I, well, I can't put my hands on it right now. But you can't put your find. hands on it right now. What have you got out of it in three years? Money financially. Yeah. Uh, well, we haven't. <laughs> I haven't. How much have you lost in three years? I don't know. Running a restaurant is a full-time job, not an occasional hobby. If Sandy can't even organise the books, it's little wonder she's hired a chef whose mouth is bigger than his talent. Right, chef. Morning. Morning. How are you? Not too bad, you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Thanks, Kev. Um, yeah. Yeah, slightly concerned, but um, a good sleep. Yourself? No, not a good kiff at all. Damn, why? Because of last night. Uh-huh. Well, that was last night, this is today. That's a good attitude. Today's another day. Mm -hmm. We live and learn. How long are you cooking? Phil's got more confidence than ability. He's never had any formal training. But Sandy makes his job tougher because she won't pay him for preparation time. The menu, right, it's just basically being thrown together. Mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to come in at nine in the morning. What I, do you mean I, you're not allowed? Well, Sandy doesn't want us to come in at nine o'clock in the morning. I get so in. So how do you get ready for service? I come in at four o'clock. 
And it's a case of throwing it together. Even I can't get fucking ready from four o'clock in the afternoon. Now it's starting to make sense why you're fucking so defensive. Totally understand. It's not entirely your fucking fault. What I want to do is fucking work together on it. No, nope, Sandra, look forward to it. You still want to punch me? No, I'll save that. I'll save that till next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. It's two hours before Saturday service, Morgan's only busy night of the week. With no preparation done, the kitchen's in chaos. Can There's not even enough food. The labels and just odds and sods thrown in here. What the fuck is that? Fucking dog shit. So what do you need now for service? Because the place looks sparse. If there's 30 people coming for yeah, dinner time... Yeah, it's freaking me out a bit. Mm. It's freaking... Not happening. It's freaking yeah, me out as well. So. Carrots, broccoli, beans, bread, prawns. And is this normal this time of afternoon for you to go off to the shops like that? Yeah. yeah. So you don't actually get the stuff back then for at least another hour? Sometimes I don't get it till 6 o'clock. When the customers are walking through the door? Fuck me. Unbelievable. The head chef should order supplies, but Sandy's been buying from a supermarket because she doesn't want to pay Phil to do it for her. Before we get any further, what I wanted to say to both of you is the fucking supermarket is not good enough. If no, this it's restaurant's not. got any it's chance of fucking right. surviving, yeah? The cost yeah. is fucking... If we had a dinner party at home, we wouldn't be sat here at fucking four o'clock looking for a fucking list, let alone running a fucking restaurant. Beans, OK, French beans, vegetables. <laughs> I think beans, beans, beans. Oh, sorry. oh, God, no, no beans. Hold on, around the next one. Run a bean, sure good. No, no, they're, they're sliced, they're pre-packed. Fucking hell. No way, man. Sorry. Fucking hell. This way. Do you want raw ones, good? What, what did we get yesterday? I think it was raw, yeah. Yeah, are you sure? Yeah. How many would you like? Oh. A couple of, um, well, kilo, whatever, a few pounds. Oh. All of those and, and some more if you have. Have you got some more than, than, than what's out? <laughs> this is ridiculous, you know that? Sandy's panic buying fillet steak. But she should have had it delivered from a cheaper wholesaler. Sandy, it's fucking five past five. Where's the fillet steak? Well, it's here somewhere. No sirloin. Sirloin. They must know we're coming. No. That's never happened before that they've got no fillets. Right. Rum steak, rum steak, no. How much is that, please? 53.89. If we had to buy this produce on last night's takings, we'll be 30 quid fucking short. I've got a fucking headache. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. It's seven o'clock and the restaurant is filling up. Morgan's is a stunning, beautiful fucking restaurant. Unfortunately, the food is shit. The chef's way inexperienced. He's self taught and he's cooking with fucking expensive ingredients bought from the local supermarkets. And Sandy is just another prime example of an individual that's opened a restaurant without having a clue how to run one. Tonight, I'm going to be watching Phil closely. Chef on, chef, one beef on it, one chicken, more well, medium, please. Phil's menu is poorly designed, but can he actually cook? Just watch your cooking, yeah? Standards now, yeah? Are you happy with that? No, 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 nor am I. You're a chef, eh? Not a fucking Coleman. No, no. No, no. Phil's just plain careless, and I won't put up with it. Watch that chicken, it's burning again. That pan's Have we got any basil? Fucking hell. Kitchen started to act like fucking slobs and happy to cook charcoal and then send it. That's not good. Fucking ridiculous. I'll tell you what, he's fucking sharp and he's. That's how he's got where he is, isn't he? His eyes are fucking everywhere. A customer has sent back a creme brulee. It's like fucking baby vomit. Do you know why it goes like that? Um, I think it um, quick west too far. No, no, no. Under the grill, far too long. Don't eat that unless you're prepared to die. Phil's biggest problem is that he just doesn't concentrate. He's simply out of his depth, making silly mistakes. I don't feel as if I'm just not in control at all of my own fucking kid. 
Young job. It's shit. Dotty Sandy's supposed to be in charge of this mess. Sandy, what are you doing? Just helping him out a bit, get rid of some of the business, you know. It's, it's going to let on tonight, and we've got no dishwasher, so we've got to give a bit of a lift. You're helping out the washer up, right? Yeah, well, you know. Sandy's interfering everywhere, doing everyone else's job and achieving Sandy. nothing. Sandy, two seconds, honey. Are you lost? Are you wondering what to do? Well, good. I'm, I'm trying to do a little bit of everything, really, to keep it Fuck all me, going. Do I know it? that? You are. What is your role tonight? What, what, what exactly are you doing? Well, I've been waiting on. Waiting the bar. on. Waiting on what? Tables. Tables, OK. Seven. Now you're doing the wine. Wine. Have you seen the size of that fucker? He's more capable of washing and drying his own fucking place. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it all night. Welcome to the fucking lunatic asylum. Sandy's so busy doing the dishes that she forgot a customer's order for gravy. He's been waiting 15 minutes and complains to Helen. So they've cleared three main courses from that table, and one guy sat there with his sausage, yeah, looking for some fucking sauce. Why is no one being straight with you and telling what they need? What, what do they want? Excuse me. It's just gravy. Start you. making it. Start making it. Yeah. yeah. He's waiting there. The food's going curl while he's waiting. They've cleared the fucking plates. They've cleared three plates. But it's only for one. It is only for one guy. He's quite happy to wait. You've got to stop kidding yourself. He's not quite happy to wait. No, of His course he's not. have cleared their main courses. Yes. Yeah. It's like a fucking kindergarten here. You know that? Isn't the this catering plate? life thing called? No, is it fuck catering life? Nothing no. like it. No, this is shambolic. Not catering at all, fuck me. How long for the gravy, Phil? Um, at least five minutes, chef. At least five minutes. Fuck me. Catering my fucking ass. I asked for a, uh, uh, some kind of sauce or a gravy, which came, took a while to come, uh, to be fair. 15 minutes, there, thereabouts, and I paid 15 quid. At last, I understand what I'm facing. The chef's slipshod concentration is producing terrible food. But he was hired by Sandy, and she's the real problem. An amateur restaurateur messing in a business she knows nothing about. It's depressing to watch the restaurant sink this low. Hello. That's the saddest main cause I've ever seen in my entire life. 39 years of age and seeing that. Don't take it personally. I want to know if anyone is going to take responsibility for tonight's catastrophe. What did you experience out there tonight? In general, um, a lot of people were quite happy out there, to be honest with you. You know, I, I've had no complaints all night. What fascinates me about you is you're either totally fucking oblivious to what's going on in your own establishment or you're fucking living a nightmare inside your, your mind. You cannot see what's going on. I can see what's going on, Gordon. I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. I can't see what's going on. But I can't deal with all these things on my own. I've been trying to keep this float for three years by doing a little bit of everything. Well, thank you. OK. Uh, Helen. It's diabolical. Yeah. The whole thing is yeah, just a sham. Thank you. And do you know what? You're the most fucking honest person in here. You know that. And the more honest you're going to be, OK, the more chance this place has got of fucking survival. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Gordon. Fifty percent of British restaurants close down within three years, often because their naive owners know nothing about the business. Sandy and her daughters can't decide who's in charge. Their sibling rivalry simmering away. Helen and Laura are both desperate to control the restaurant. But from what I've seen, only one sister stands out. There's certain issues with family and a sister wants to do it and I want to do it and mm -hmm. we're at the moment sharing it between each other. Sure. And I think what we need is a kick up the backside and we all need to realise that, you know, this is it and we need to put together. One person to control it, yeah. Are you capable of running this place, you personally? Yeah, I am capable of running it. I think I'm the practical one in the family. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit more grounded than the other two. <laughs> They're fantastic, but... Mm -hmm. Very similar and a bit airy-fairy. We are in the shit, are we not? Yeah, definitely. That's the reason why I need to open things up. Yeah. Everything come out, identify the issues and, and, and start tackling them. To save the restaurant, there's got to be a radical management shake-up. So today, I'm going to be cruel to be kind. All I saw last night was just individuals running around like headless chickens, acting like children. Hence the reason why we're in a fucking playground. Right, what's your role? General manager, front of house. Bollocks, no chance. 
No chance. This is this is serious now. You, sadly, whether you like it or not, okay, are not capable of becoming a general manager in that establishment. We've got far too many chiefs. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And there. insufficient Indian. Yeah. No. You need I to delegate be. to other yeah. people and, and tell them what she to do. She can't do it. No. She goes and washes up for 15 minutes to make sure the kitchen port is there next week. And she, she needs to feel... delegate jobs, so I agree with you. Yeah. And make I sure know. that, that what she's doing is... the restaurant is... manager's job. Yeah. Your job... For yeah. a house. It's where I want to be. You're the host. Who's... Meeting and greeting and sitting right. people down, yes? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Your position is the assistant manager. Yeah. Who's, who's the manager then? Don't get defensive. Can I just do one at a time? Yes. Yeah. No one's leading. Unless I, you've got defined roles. Excuse me, roles. I'm sorry to interrupt you there, yeah, Gordon. Go on. I was away last night, and if I had have been there, things maybe would have yeah. been slightly different. Okay. But the whole shoulders of the restaurant wait on, you know, you coming in. You wouldn't have changed anything last night because it was just dire. It was shambolic, sweetheart. And it was best with your interest not to be there last night. Excuse me. One thing you've got is balls, you know that? I like the way that you fucking blatantly know what the problems are, but you've got to get it off your chest, you know that? And what are you scared about being a manager? Confrontation? No, it's not so much that. It's actually being given sole responsibility, because yeah. at the moment, yeah. you know, my sister's just walked off there, because yeah. she's obviously upset about... Are you, uh, Laura, about... are you going to come in, or...? Yeah? Thank you. Maybe you can prove yourself, yeah. you know, look, it's fine. Look. This is not a discussion to separate you two or to argue you two. Of course it two. isn't, okay. yeah. But unfortunately, one, two, three are doing all the same job. I'm sorry, you've got it completely wrong. Let me just finish what I'm trying to say, and once we've all defined our roles, you then we can put it into the pot. It. Fine. Yeah? yeah? And clearly you're upset. Yeah, I am. Clearly upset, and that is a stinky attitude. Anyway. And how can you walk away like a I'm child? I'm the one who's ran the business on my own yeah. when these right. two are on holiday together. Okay. You tell these two okay. to do my role, and okay. you can stick that going okay. I'm sorry, there I called out. Typical. Typical. Well, we, we decide. No, Typical. No, she's worked so hard, Gordon. You no. don't know. You sit don't. down. All he's trying to do is to find down. I know, but you haven't people? been here. Are you running away? Laura, Come over. Laura. Come over. No, because you don't know my role. Laura. Laura. Grow up. No. Calm down. I can't do what that. What about the big sister here? He's, You're not even listening. She's fantastic, but when You're she fine. runs out, I have to I pick the shit out. up. Calm down. I was back in the morning. Calm Laura, down. Laura, it's completely stupid walking off. Let her walk off. Let her walk off. What's your role? General manager, front of house. Bollocks. No chance. Morgan's restaurant was being run like a ladies' lunch club until I made Helen general manager. One thing you've got is balls, you know that? Her sister Laura didn't like it one bit. You tell these two okay. to do my role and okay. you can stick that one. Okay. I'm sorry, there I called out. Typical. Well, that's tough. They either change or go bankrupt. Morgan's can only survive by attracting local people. Before I redesign the menu, I'll have to find out what they really want. What do you look for when you go out to your local eatery? Um, something quick, um, tasty, simple. Have you heard of Morgan's? Yes. And feedback? You're too good, <laughs> I'm afraid. What would you look for in your local restaurant? To be treated nice by the staff uh -huh. and to be treated as an individual. Good. And how much do you expect to pay for dinner? What would you be happy with? I don't pay, my boyfriend will pay. Morgan's menu belongs in a bad, expensive gastro pub. My plan is to modernise it with fresh ingredients and lower the prices. We stripped it back to the basics and homed in on good, local, honest produce and kept it very, very simple. Something light, vibrant, a salmon, for instance, poached in a really nice autumnal broth, but it doesn't get any better than that. We're gonna buy one item here, something simple, something local, Morgan's middle-class neighbourhood is full of foodies. They love fresh, tasty ingredients served up in healthy, attractive dishes. Incredibly, Sandy and Phil haven't realised this, even though there's a great organic market on their doorstep. I'm Sandy. Yeah, I'm Sandy. Nice to meet you. Slightly dotty. Guess where she gets the meat from? Uh, also, it's a supermarket. It is a supermarket, yeah, that's right. However, that's stopped now. Um, we're going to look for some lamb steak. Something right simple, on. something local and something not too expensive. OK. This is excellent, locally produced lamb. It just gives a little bit of yeah. excitement from the waitresses to sort of, A, yeah. this is local organic yeah. lamb, B, we got it from the farmer's market this morning in our street, and it just starts to make it feel a little bit more fucking romantic. Thank you. OK. Yeah, we'll be 53 or 6. We don't do Tesco club points, so call it 50 for guy. OK, lamb steaks, yes? Yes. Yeah. 
little bit of rosemary, a little bit of garlic. Yeah, bones are gone. Phil's a self-taught chef who knows very little, so I'll have to start from scratch with him. What you've got to do is just remember you're stepping up to the challenge, huh? Big time. This lamb steak is my first dish designed for Morgan's traditional menu. Get some colour on there. Not quite. We'll serve it for Sunday lunch tomorrow. And then finally, yeah, gravy, lamb sauce over the top. Now, if anyone complains, paying twelve fifty for a lamb steak. It's clean, it's local, it's fresh. That, for me, oozes value for money. It's just about going back to basics. Really simple dish, tasty, easy to do. It just wants me to succeed, like. Sunday isn't a day of rest in the restaurant business. There's lots of money to be made. Incredibly, Morgan's was closed on Sundays. But to test my new team and my new menu, I've decided to open for lunch. It's Helen's day off. So sensitive assistant manager Laura is in charge. Laura? Or supposed to be. Where in the fuck is everyone? Today was a big chance to impress me. She said she's got a business degree. Lauren? So who's running it today? None of the managers in. None of our so-called I'm not assistants. sure whether Laura is in today. So who's leading it today? Who's running the fucking restaurant today? Basically, Laura on her own, probably. Will she be in? It's a fucking joke. What's worse is Laura's responsibility to sort out the reservations. Where's the table plan for today? Laura we're must the, have it. We're just the chefs. <laughs> My host, Sandy, hasn't turned up either. The fucking plot thickens. She's uh, having pains in her chest last night, so... This yeah. place needs a person to come in in the morning, open up and fucking inspire everyone, check on the kitchen, work with the kitchen, table plan, and give some oomph, but it's like a, it's like a free house here, you know that? It's 12.45 and Laura's still not here. Hi, uh, Laura. Um, good afternoon. It's Gordon. I'm in the restaurant. Uh, I can't believe I'm chasing the management to come into work in their own restaurant on such a crucial day. I've been told Sandy's at home resting. Sandy! Sandy! But she won't even answer. Oh, fucking hell. Sunday, bloody Sunday. If you're not prepared to face up the responsibilities of running a fucking business, then why open it in the first place? Pathetic. Fucking pathetic. Morning. Morning. Laura finally turns up, but no apology. <laughs> to cap it all, she can't even find her own table plan. Has anybody seen the page at the box? No. The first customers are due in 20 minutes. Two hours ago, we were in the same you know, situation as what I said. We were looking for it. Sorry. Now she's just been rude. Laura? Laura, come here a minute. Come here a minute. Come here a minute. Is, is this because things ran quite smoothly last night, so it's like a ploy to sort of mess things up? I'll run the fucking show if you don't show me some form of fucking business study degree that you've been fucking harping on and you've got. Sorry, I just can't. Well, stop being so fucking stupid. Now you're blaming me for the fucking reservation book. Two hours ago, when you were in bed, we were in here looking for the fucking thing. It's gone. Can we move on and try to get some form of shape in this restaurant? Okay. Isn't that the most sensible thing to do? But let me just tell you, what I've witnessed in the last three hours here... Hello? You can shake your head and run off again. This time, I don't give a fuck. Okay. But don't dare blame me for this chaotic mess. You don't have to be so rude. Laura, come here a minute. Oh, not again. Not again. Not again. Bollocks. Unbelievable. Hi, Helen. I'm desperate for a real manager. I'm just concerned, Helen, you know that. I'm just like, fucking staff have gone. The two are in the kitchen. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Helen's on her way in, but I have to run it until she gets here. Uh, Emma, do you serve the starters? Come round and jump on the main courses, yeah? How are you? Welcome. Great. Good to see you. How are you? Now we're up against it. A birthday party for 12 have turned up, 
unannounced. Clear your space, clear your area, so you've got a nice, clean, yeah, area to think and fucking work in, yeah? Welcome, good to see you. It's been a bit of a manic morning for a Sunday. Just face the music and dance. At least someone's happy. Well, what we're about to receive, man, the great architect of the universe, make us truly thankful. Amen. With Phil in the kitchen, they might well need the Almighty's help. I hope to God he remembers what I've taught him. Uh, now I'm reduced to waiting on tables. It's how I started out. The birthday man himself, thank you. You're allowed a second portion and the third vegetable soup. What's wrong? Talk to me. I forgot to put the sauce on. Come on, come on, think, concentrate, concentrate, come on. What I need in here hey, is for you to stay on top of it, you know that, yeah? Yeah? Before you start sending that main course, in your mind, have a little rehearsal. Lamb, cabbage, potato, carrot, sauce, just run it through. And the more you test your mind, you can't forget. The cavalry has arrived at last. Helen. I'm happy to see you. What I'm more pissed with anything is just the most amazing fucking potential lunch, fully booked, waiting list for lunch, and fucking, yeah, a golden opportunity going down the drain, yeah? However, you're here, yeah? Stabilise the ship. Thank you for all your help. Come on, Phil. Hello. Don't forget what's in the oven. No, 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 yeah? no, no, And start no. organising, how you're going to start dressing nine main courses with Emma. Emma! Yes, chef! You're the chef and I'll, I'll please be involved. Yes. Phil's concentration deserts him, and he's making charcoal again. Oh, dear. That's bad. At least one chef here has high standards. Phil's sous chef, Emma, turns out to be a dark horse. She's quick, diligent, and passionate. Her talents go beyond sticky toffee pudding. Phil can't cope without her. It's like home cooking, isn't it? It's like, this has really kicked everything into touch now. It's beautiful. <laughs> it means a while to me to stay busy on a Sunday, because it just wasn't. And that's why I'm here now, so that things go well. We take a lot of money, and we'll be all back next Sunday. I was right to put Helen in charge. We've just about got away with it. But with Sandy ignoring me and Laura Strops, it's not good enough. You've got to understand, I'm feeling sick. I arrived here this morning and it was pandemonium. So whilst I totally respect you weren't feeling well, I could still do with your support. You have my support. We're drawing a line today and we're moving forward. It's not a lifestyle, it's a business. And we're going to treat it like a business. I want you to let your chef do his job. And if he doesn't do that job, get rid of him. Really sorry, but if you don't fucking act and cook and run this place like a head chef, then don't expect to be here. I've been really struggling with how to relaunch this shambolic restaurant, but I've had an idea to invite some local celebrities and create a stir. Around here, it's littered with wags, actresses and actors. Uh, Hollyoaks is filmed around the corner, and it's a perfect opportunity to get some really good publicity for the restaurant. So. It's neighbourhoods, and the minute anyone spots anyone famous in there, they all want to descend upon it, so that creates a buzz. It's a race against time for Phil. He's got to master some classic and healthy recipes to lure those ladies who lunch. Taste, and tell me what that needs. Salt, yeah. Good. Emma's the best thing in the kitchen. With her helping Phil, we may succeed with the relaunch. You are the second chef. There's no reason why not you can't run this place down the line in his day off. You know that. Well, You're more than intention. capable. I really mean that. And if you can be that passionate about a sticky toffee pudding, fuck knows what you're going to be like when you let loose on fucking meat or fish. Huh? For the relaunch, I thought of a new role for Sandy to stop her meddling. Why don't we, for the first time ever, in between courses, start auctioning off some of these items? Oh, wow. Very yeah. Selling antiques is what she's good at, and there's plenty around to keep her occupied. Just in between courses. Yeah. Really we can start moving some idea. of the stuff. Yeah. The great thing is, of all, he's actually defined everyone's role, and that's it now. We're all going to stick to it, and life should be a lot better. We're fully booked for the relaunch today, and I'm nervous. I've staked my reputation on Morgan's. Key to my strategy is Phil's ability to cook my new menu, but I'm still not convinced about him. 
fried chicken in. Skin side down first. Olive oil. Why not butter? Um, put, uh, put a little burn on the pasta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has to concentrate on getting the basics right. If you can just slow down for me and fucking think a little bit harder, we're fucking 90% of the way there. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. Do not get distracted. Excellent. Morning. Morning. How are you? Fine, Come through. Come through. Morning. Come through. All right. Let me put these now. Just going through two or three dishes. Chicken with lentils and the poached salmon in an awesome broth. Mm -hmm. And nice crispy skin. Mm -hmm. Tasty, very tasty. Mm -hmm. You have got to realise the potential here. 48 book for tonight. Normal restaurants are struggling to get fucking five in. It's time for a pep talk. And my ragtag team need some help. Even from sensitive flowers. Laura has finished sulking and has decided to lend a hand. Laura, welcome back. Thank you. Concerned about assistant manager, manager, or just concerned about running the place? Just concerned that the place is running smoothly. Good. I've still expected him to roar, but for now, I'm quite happy. I'm quite stable. He unsettles me. <laughs> Fucking big night tonight. Yeah? It could be something quite major. Don't fuck it. When the shit hits the fan, we stay united. We've all got our jobs to do with no interference. No interference. I'm very happy. I'm very happy to take a back seat. The celebrities have taken the bait. First in are Hollyoak stars, Sarah Dunn and Jennifer Biddle. The footballers' wives have come too, including Louise Owen, Michael's wife. And next in is Sherry Murphy. Where wags hang out, others will surely follow. My strategy has paid off. Good to see you. Hungry? Starving. Yes. Going to eat dessert as well? Yeah. There are no skinny minis here, are there? We've got proper, uh, proper, no, like proper foodies. OK, who doesn't need to be behind the bar? There's no one on the floor. There's five people behind the bar. Helen's cracking the whip and keeping Sandy and the waitresses in line. The new menu's going down well. Can I get the roast chicken roast, please? Table seven, three chicken. But Phil has a problem. Laura, an order's been taken. You took it on table six, and there's no check in the kitchen and nothing on the top there. An order has gone missing, and the customers are waiting. Can we have been waiting one? 20 minutes. Can you go and sort it out, please? Did you get a table six in? No. No? Come on, go on. It was the um, smoked salmon. Smoked salmon for me, and chicken and lamb. Start us out straight away, please, Em, yeah? It's not your fault, yeah? One adult, one salmon, one chicken, one lamb, please, Phil, yeah? Try and push that table forward, fuck yeah. it now. I might like tonight, do you know what I mean? Thank fuck the kitchen solid, that's all I'm saying. Oh, God. Two risottos, yes? Yes. Good man. Don't drop, yeah? Drop. Will Phil keep his concentration and cook my menu well enough to impress Walton's glitterati? This is too more fucking nothing. It's very hard to keep fucking concentration. Despite the cock-up, everyone seems happy. I just hope the customers want to bid for Sandy's antiques. Sandy may be clueless about running restaurants, but when it comes to selling antiques, she's a natural. Mr Ramsey, what are we going to start it off as? £20. Pounds. Right, somebody will bid me £20. Pounds. <laughs> £20 pounds is good. £20. £30. Any advance on board? Big, the pounds is thick. One risotto, please, Shirkin. 70 over there, 80, 90, 100 pounds, that's your bid. Dirty chef's a happy chef. Like a pig in shit. Let's go, we have table 10. 45, thank you. We're selling at 45 pounds now. I'll get it, I'll get it. Ooh, 50 just in time. 50 pounds, 50. The local celebrities are flashing their cash, but what do they think of the food? It's very nice. <laughs> it's delicious, actually, because it's a bit crispy, but it's also very tender as well. It's lovely, really, really nice. I'm really impressed. I'd definitely come back again. It's been somewhere that I've never actually come along to because I've heard good and bad things about it. But, um, yeah, definitely come back. Phil's cooked his heart out and not burnt a thing. I feel more in control. As he says, as he just fucking knocked the salt over. Fucking hell. What a swat. Emma's played a vital role too. 
I just think it's gone well today. It's, it's been a pleasure to work today, actually. Selling at 65 pounds. Morgan's is transformed. Just a week ago, it was in chaos under Dotty Sandy, serving up tasteless stod from a supermarket. £140. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Good. Huh? That's what I do. Well, you're in your element, good? for God's sake. I've never seen you so fucking happy. <laughs> uh, how much do you take in fucking selling the antiques? What do we sell? Five, five six hundred pounds. Five, six hundred pounds. Fantastic. Sorry, in 15 minutes. Yeah. That's fucking good news. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Tonight, you found your role. Don't take that the wrong way, but that's what you're good at doing. I agree with you. And you have been the toughest nut I've ever <laughs> attempted to crack. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Dying room. I just want you two to, to combine. No one's in competition with each other. You know, you both have an amazing fucking role. Yeah. The kitchen, solid. I cannot tell you the difference from tonight in comparison to what went on seven days ago. It's extraordinary. And the minute you start changing it, and reverting back to the old ways, you fucked. I'm back in Liverpool. It's a month after I turned failing Bistro Morgan's into a packed neighbourhood restaurant. But there's been a shocking development. Helen's told me that following a row, she's let someone go. Um, I'm on the search for Phil. Um, he's left Morgan's and. Uh, you know, he set up camp here, so uh, down to get hold of him and find out what the fuck's going on, really. Jesus. What the fuck are you doing here? How are you, well, everyone? Yeah, well, well, how are you? How are you? I'm sad. I'm sad. Yeah, sad. good to see you. Feeling sad? You looking well? I feel well. What happened? She said that um, she'd had loads of complaints. I was told my services were not required no more. There's not a lot I can do about it now, so I've moved on and I aim to put me a mark in here. Without me there, Phil's concentration went again. But it's actually good news. Now, as a sous chef, he'll train under an experienced head chef. Just learn to stay focused, do what I'm supposed to do, listen, and concentrate more on my job. Just feel less stressed. Do you want to take that, please? It's for the best that Phil has left Morgan's, you know and I'm pleased for him. I'm off to the restaurant to find out the owner's side of the story. I'm worried about what's happened to my menu and just who's cooking it. Slightly nervous because it was a month ago, fucking hard work, and I came across an owner that was totally clueless when it came to running a business. Ladies, hello. How are you, darling? Well, yeah. Thank you. good to see you. You well? Hello. Yes. Nice to see you. How are you? Got that colour back on your cheeks again. Yes. How are you, darling? Welcome back. Are you well? Lovely you've been in the you. you've been in the hairdresser. Oh yes. Of course. You look immaculate as ever. Thank you very much. Huh? Lovely. So who's in the kitchen? Emma's still here. Emma's right? now. Been, Emma's now our head chef. Is she? Emma's been, yeah. That's fantastic yeah. news. Yeah. My biggest worry about Phil was the level of his concentration. We had to let him go. Mm. We thought that you know where we want to be, and Emma was the next step, yeah. and she's been there for us and dedicated and. 100% we've had fun, yeah. so. Hello. So, Emma, the dark horse of the kitchen has been rewarded for all her hard work. Have you taken the reins? Yeah, I've tried to. I'm Good getting more confident. I remember you saying to me, come out your corner, you're like a little mouse. Yeah. And everyone said to me, oh, Emma's got very authoritative in the kitchen. I'm pleased. I'm so pleased. That means the whole place has been run by females. By females? Which is working fucking well. What I'm dying to eat. I can't believe how can't quiet this is. Ya. The beef looks fantastic out there with the celeriac mash. The braised beef, yeah. And braised with apricots. Definitely not. <laughs> Head chefs are predominantly male, and it's just good that I'm having a go, and someone's given me the chance to have a go. It's stuck to me to prove myself now. So last week we took just under four thousand pounds. Yeah. Helen's computerised the accounts. A big contrast to Sandy's chaos. Yeah. Week before I came here. You barely hit fifteen hundred pound. We were losing, then we broke even, and now we're in profit. Uh -huh. And we have done for three weeks. We've yeah. been in profit. You seem a lot more confident than you did a month ago. Yeah. In terms of your role yeah. defined. I've, well, people have sort of had confidence in me, which is the, f you know, the first thing about you can portray what you want to do and put your foot down, and people don't listen to you. But once you've been given a defined role and people start believing in you, then yeah. it actually gives you yeah. power and wings to want to fly and do yeah, what absolutely. what you're doing. It's great to see the restaurant full. 
and Emma is so tuned into the menu that she's even added a dish of her own, braised beef. Thank you. Nice. Lovely, Vicky. Look how tender that beef is. It's just falling apart, almost like it's melting on your fork. Mm. Wow. <coughs> That's delicious. <laughs> Fucking hell. It's so upsetting, you know that. In comparison to the dinner I had last time I was here, I just cannot compare. This is delicious. Yeah. Food was Great. delicious. Great. Really good. Thank you. Absolutely spot on. I wanted to impress chef. Yeah, you certainly did that. Don't stop. Nice. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Ladies. Thank you. Not a man in sight. <laughs> Fuck me. Not a man in sight is just the way we like it. <laughs> Not Thank a man you. in sight. <laughs> the ladies of Morgan's are now making money against all the odds. Girl power has saved this restaurant. Can I see the wine next? I'm happy. Morgan's is now running as a neighborhood restaurant. Helen's in control of the business. Emma, clearly knows what the fuck she's doing in the kitchen, and she seems so much more confident. Happy customers, happy staff, and the food was delicious. Thank God for that. Morgan's, it's got it right. <laughs>